Welcome to ESPN's College Football Saturday. Celebrating 20 years of college football on ESPN. Tonight, the seventh-ranked Tennessee Volunteers take on the Auburn Tigers. All season long, ESPN Saturday Night College Football will be broadcast in high definition. Presented by Phillips and Best Buy. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried. And welcome to the Plains of Alabama, Auburn, Alabama. The Tigers got started miserably. They were 0-2 and, and shocked a lot of people. Since then, they have won two games in a row. And, Mike, so many people have come up this weekend and said, hey, the Tigers are back. Are they back? That's my question to you. I'm not sure. The 86,000 people that are here are going to find out that answer tonight. When you look at Auburn, I think their defense is really good. I think their offense is sus suspect. I don't know if they're back. Uh, they're playing a Tennessee team tonight. Both defensive coordinators are going to say, don't let the quarterback get comfortable. So I expect a lot of pressure on the quarterback. The two head coaches in this ball game tonight, Philip Fulmer, won a national championship in 1998. It's his 12th season as the Tennessee head coach. 107 victories. And Tommy Tuberville, fifth year as the head man here on the Plains. Tennessee won the toss. They have deferred, so it will be the Auburn Tigers decked out in their blue jerseys with red piping and white trousers to receive. You take a look at the series history. Auburn leads it 22-21-3. That's how tight this has been. Tennessee has won the last four meetings. Some of the capacity crowd here. Weather is not going to be a problem. It is supposed to be extremely mild this evening. No chance of rain. And this crowd is pumped and ready for this one to get started. As you look at Carnell Williams. Cadillac is the deep man. Will Hoyt has the ball teed at the 35-yard line. And we're about to get this one underway. East against West from the Southeastern Conference. Here's Will Hoyt's kick. It is a line drive and gets by Williams. It'll go into the end zone, no harm. And the Tigers will take it over at the 20-yard line. So Mike, it gives us an opportunity to talk about Jason Campbell. And here's a young man from Taylorsville, Mississippi, that I think has made great strides. Ron, watching him on tape and watching him in practice, he's more comfortable rolling out and bootlegging with a football outside the tackle box than he is throwing drop back passing games. So I expect Auburn to get him outside, get him outside on bootlegs tonight. And I think that that comment that you made about comfort levels for both of these quarterbacks is particularly important for Jason because he has not played nearly as much as Casey Clawson. Here comes the first play from an eye set. Fakes it to Cadillac. Sets the throw, and he's got a wide open mix. And he is going to take it out to the 30 yard line. They're spotting out at the 29. Cooper Wallace, the tight end on the receiving end. It'll be a second down and short. Williams, along with Brandon Johnson in the backfield. Wallace, the tight end, who just made the catch. Courtney Taylor and Jerish McIntyre, the wide receivers. The offensive line Para, Reddick, Lindsey, Crittenden, and Marcus McNeil. Marcus. As the coaches say, is the best of that group up there. This time, no fullback in front of Cadillac, but now they shift him. And it's an offset eye for all intents and purposes. And Williams gets the handoff, has the first down. He'll go for six yards, maybe seven, as the tackle is made by Rashad Baker. And let's take a look at the defensive starters for the Volunteers of Tennessee. Harrelson, Mapu, Dickerson, and Constantine Richmond up front. The linebackers, or oh, this is a consistent group. Peace has done such a, go a good job this year. Simon and Burnett both capable of big play. In the secondary, Greer, Baker, Wilson, and Stewart. So Auburn moves the chains, and they have it with excellent field position at the 36. Campbell. Gets the pass away, has it complete to McIntyre, and he gets knocked back immediately, but it's a gain of four. Ron, they're trying to get Jason Campbell off early here. They ran a bootleg on the first play, and that's his comfort zone. Watch Constantine Richmond here on the play before. Looks like he was taken down, and they missed a hold, and Constantine Richmond went right to the umpire and said, hey, they're taking me down. Uh, you got to call. So we'll keep an eye on that. Cadillac, the lone setback, 
but this time from the I formation, they offset him to the right side, and they hand it off to him right up the middle. Has five, has ten, and he's off. Fifteen, make it sixteen yards on the carry. The Cadillac is heated up for the full tank tonight and running hot, straight and narrow. If you're Tennessee's Philip Palmer, what you want to do is weather this storm. Now, here comes Cadillac Williams through on the draw trap play, and he gets in the secondary. But, Ron, you know Auburn's going to be pumped up. You know these fans are going to be pumped up. It's like a fight. You've got to weather this early round uh, show that they're going to give you. Cooper Wallace, the tight end with it, an excellent block to help spring his tailback. Williams now two attempts, 23 yards. Too tight in alignment this time, and Campbell stands up, possibly an audible. Gives it to Williams. Big coach, the speed right up the middle, has 10 yards again, and another first down. All the way to the 30-yard line, and it's a gain of 14 as the Baker and Jabari Greer have to combine on the stop. Eddie Graham, the running back coach, told me this week that Cadillac Williams had his best week of practice. He said he took a hit last week against Western Kentucky on his uh, injury. And he said he responded well, and he figures he's going to cut it loose. Johnson in motion. And they give it to Williams. And you got a horse running away. He is. Go to him again. And this time, a great job defensively by the front of uh, the Tennessee defensive line. First hit was made by Mapu, and then uh, Kevin Simon also was there to help the sophomore out of Walnut Creek, California. Yeah, the Cadillac is a really a fine looking tailback, Ron. He is a speed guy that when he makes his cuts, he's working up the football field. Doesn't lose any ground. Wallace, the tight end, flips from the right over to the left side. Second down, about 10 and a half. They give it to Williams into the secondary again, but this time those safeties, Mike, had crept up a couple of steps, and they were able to get the, the tackle before he got farther into the secondary. What you do, Ron, is you try to figure out if you can stop him with your normal defense, and then you bring the safeties up. Last week, we said Tennessee's defense has given up 53 yards rushing, but they played three passing teams. Now they play their rushing team, South Carolina, 217 on them. Eighth play of the drive coming up. It is third down. The line to make is the 20 and a half yard line from the shotgun. Here comes a blitz up the middle. They got the screen set, gets a block, cuts it inside. It'll be first and 10 Auburn Tigers if there are no markers on the field and we see none. Tackle is made by Kevin Burnett. What Auburn does is strip their first eight plays. They give Tennessee a lot of different looks, a lot of different formations. They set the screen up perfectly. Kevin Burnett makes the play, but they have Tennessee's defense guessing right now. John Chavis, we talked with him in a conference call on Wednesday evening, and he talked about the number of missed tackles they had last week. It was not the high water mark for the season, but they had nine, and that time uh, an extremely good tackle by Burnett. Ronnie Brown in the ball game. Fresh legs, runs over a defensive back. He has 10, cut it off at 11 yards, and it is first and goal. Auburn Tigers, and Mike, you talk about weathering a storm right now. This hurricane is a Category 5. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, Ron. Ronnie Brown comes into the ball game. This college football team has better backs than some pro teams. They go three or four deep, but Ronnie Brown is more of a power runner than Cadillac Williams. So they set up shop first and ten. The ball just outside the five. Tenth play of the drive. It all started back at the 20-yard line of Auburn. High formation. Brown right at the middle. Two, one. Well, every team tries to send the message on their opening drive. And Phil Fulmer, I guarantee you, knows right now they've got more than they can say grace over right now. I mean, this Auburn team came out on fire. Vaughn to attempt the extra point, trying to make it 7 to nothing early. Ball is down, kick is up. And that's our score. 10 minutes, 46 seconds showing on the clock in his opening quarter. It is Auburn 7 and Tennessee coming to bat.
So we're back and uh, part of the capacity house tonight. A lot of orange in this stadium. Two different shades, obviously, for Auburn and for Tennessee. Ten plays, 80 yards, four minutes and 14 seconds. And Carnell Williams, five attempts for 40 yards. Ronnie Brown, as Mike said, a little bit more of a power back. And they put him in. He had two carries, and he scored the touchdown. Yost to kick it off to Larkins. High end to go in, and it is returnable from the goal line. Larkins at the 10. He will not make the 15. So let's talk about the starter at quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers. He is a veteran. He's a senior. Casey Clawson. And I can promise you, with all the hype and with all the noise in the stadium, Mike, he he doesn't hear that. He's not bothered by it at all. Ron, when you look at Casey Clawson, he, there's only one thing you have to look at. He's 11-0 away uh, from home in, in the uh, as a quarterback, starting quarterback. So he's been used to this. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Tennessee. Penalized half the distance to the goal. It'll be first and ten. Wow, Steve Shaw, our referee tonight. One of the really fine young officials in uh, in college football. And we'll see exactly what happened. A lot of pushing and shoving here. And this is exactly what Bill Fulmer did not want, starting this deep in his own territory. So they'll go from the one seven. Play action by Clawson. Throws this one and just throws it away. So the rest of the offense, the tailback, Cedric Houston, Jabari Davis. We'll see both of them tonight. McClure, the tight end. Mark Jones and Tony Brown, the wide receivers. Up front with the offense, Munoz. Respert, the start at left guard. Scott Wells at center. Cody Douglas at right guard. And Sean Young is the right tackle. Second down and 10. Play action. And Clausen goes up on top, and the ball is caught by Tennessee. Mark Jones, and he took it away. I thought it was going to be intercepted. Well, he plays both offense and defense, so he's used to intercepting footballs. And Mark Jones met, just made a great catch. He became a defensive back on this play. He runs a fade. Rodgers is sitting perfect for the interception. All of a sudden, Mark Jones says, I'm taking it. Wow. That was big time play by Mark Jones. That's one of those plays that uh, we talk about putting an asterisk by it. That thing was there for the picking. First and 10 Tennessee. It is a gain of 23 yards on the completed pass play. Auburn shows blitz. They stay at home. Clawson going to go on top. And this one is well of a thrown at the 32 yard line. Tony Brown is the man that he wanted. Here are the starters on defense for the Auburn Tigers in a very good front seven. Langenfeld, DeMarco McNeil, he's the best uh, up front. Spencer Johnson and Reggie Torbor. Reggie has done a good job of rushing the passer. Travis Williams, Dontarius Thomas, and Carlos Dansby, excellent linebackers. And then the secondary, Hobbs, Herring, Rose Green, and Carlos Rogers. Junior Rose Green normally is the starting corner. They have moved him back to his old position of safety tonight. Play clock down to three, down to two. Gets the snap just in time, and Clawson under pressure, and he's going to go down at the 24-yard line, and that is Spencer Johnson on the tackle. Ron, and talking before the ball game with the Tennessee coaches, they, we talked about DeMarco McNeil, but they said the guy that really is the tough defensive lineman to block is Spencer Johnson, the senior. Sideline warning against Auburn. That's the first warning. Sideline warning. It'll be third down. What happens is the official's trying to work down that sideline. Now, all of a sudden, he's running into players. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get hurt. i got to get these guys back. Tommy Tuberville pacing. He knows his team off to a good start. And right now, it is a third down and very long. He would like to send Tennessee's offense right back to the sideline. Clawson 
Dawson from the shotgun. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Steps up and the pass is caught, and that is James Banks. The ball is loose, and Auburn says they have it. Let's see. Nope, the linesman right there said, nope, it's Tennessee's ball. Auburn did have it, and I believe James Banks was able to get there and wrestled away. James Banks is the big receiver for this Tennessee football team. Runs a quick slant. Gets hit by Herring, the safety. Watch him get in there and get that football back. 17 catches for James Banks this year. That was DeMarco McNeil, Mike, who ripped it away from him. Yeah, zone blitz. Dustin Colquitt, he was our MVP of the ball game last week against South Carolina. He was simply magnificent. First to the SEC, number two in the nation, and the left footer sends this one a mile high. It is caught at the 14, and a fair catch is called for and made by Trey Smith. 49 yards at his opening punt. We'll take a break. 7 0 Tigers. ESPN's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. 1 800 ADT ASAP. And by Roadkill. Prepare for the ultimate mission based car combat experience. Roadkill. And we are back. Mike, do you expect more of the same from Auburn as far as keeping it on the ground in the second series? Same thing, Ron. Uh, mix up the plays. Keep Jason Campbell in a comfort zone. Well, Campbell should be comfortable. Three of his first three for 23 yards. Trey Smith in motion to the top of your screen, and they give it to Williams. Cadillac turns the corner at the 20. And wow, going to be knocked down hard at the 20 yard line. Adrian Karsten, let's go to the sideline. What do you have for us? Ron, Tommy Tuberville did something here yesterday for the first time. This has never done it before. It took about a 90 minute morning walk around campus. And whether he was talking to other football fans or talking to himself, the question was always the same. Are we really a better football team or do we have this false sense of security? The point is, Ron, that the answer was all the same. Tennessee will tell us. It's October. We're into the SEC schedule. I can tell you right now, there's nothing false about the level of emotion down here right now. He said it was a fun walk, but it kept him moving. Snap was fumbled for a moment, and Campbell's going to go on top, and this pass is overthrown. And now I think Auburn had a free play because Tennessee looked as though they were guilty of encroachment, that they had jumped across Mapu, I believe. So that's the reason the play was, uh, was not whistled down. All sides on the defense. Five yard penalty will result in a first down. Tell you this about Tommy Tub Tuberville and his walk. You only walk after you win two games. He wasn't <laughs> going to take that walk the first two weeks. When you lose two, you don't want to walk around campus. Yeah, there were some people suggesting he take a walk, but off a short <laughs> plank. <laughs> you don't walk when you lose. Brandon Johnson, the fullback, lines up in front of uh, Carnell Cadillac Williams. Tennessee. Jamming up at the line of scrimmage and Campbell now with an audible. First down, the ball just across the 25, and it's Williams. Bounces it outside, has five, has ten, and he got to the races. Lost his footing. It's going to be a gain of 18, and it was Mark Jones who possibly saved a touchdown. Well, the defensive front from Tennessee is being handled by this Auburn offensive line. That's the really everybody thought was the weakness of this Auburn football team. Cadillac gets in the secondary. A lot of missed tackles by Tennessee early. One of the things that John Chavis said in our visit with him, they had 18 missed tackles against Florida, 11 against South Carolina, and 12 against Marshall. And he wants that stuff to stop. But so far tonight, they are starting to add up a few as well. And this is going to be a gain of about five yards in the running play. A Simon is there to make the stop. And Tommy Tuberville liked his walk, but he liked this better. Cadillac on the first play, getting into the secondary. Then they hit Cadillac with a screen pass, and they threw Tennessee's defense off. Then when you take Cadillac up, you take the, bring a Lincoln in and Ronnie Brown with a touchdown. Ronnie Brown, in fact, has just checked back into the Auburn lineup. 
as they go with an offset eye. Brandon Johnson, the fullback, and here comes Tennessee with a blitz. They run away from it, but that's going to be a nice job, and the Vols will stop this one after no gain. It is Jason Hall at the line of scrimmage making the tackle. Ron, I, I don't like to make crazy statements. I made a statement earlier. I said Auburn's got a better running backs than most pro teams, and I stand by that. Carnell Williams is going to be a pro. Ronnie Brown's going to be a pro. Maybe the best-looking guy is Brandon Jacobs, who's 6'4", 257. He's huge. He actually told us in practice on Thursday he's up to 263 pounds, and we will see him before the night is over. Anthony Mix in motion, short drop, delivers it. That's Mix right over the middle, takes the catch, and he'll go inside the 40 of Tennessee and down to the 37 and a half yard line. It's a gain of 15. Jabril Wilson on the stop. Tennessee needs a stop here. They we talked about them weathering a storm. The storm is going to get ready to rain on him here pretty soon. Anthony Mix is a guy who was a tight end. They moved him out to wide receiver. He has really added a lot of dimensions to this offense. Six foot five receiver. Two tight end alignment, two wide receivers. Ronnie Brown, the lone setback behind Jason Campbell. And now Campbell with another audible. Plenty of time on the play clock, though. It's still at seven. And they go Brown right at the middle of gaping hole. And he'll take it inside the 30 down to the 29. That's going to be a gain of eight. Now, John Chavis has got to be, he, he's got to be scratching his head because Tennessee does not get manhandled like this, Mike. No, and we, when you, we talk about the offensive line being important for the quarterback, the defensive line's important for the linebackers. The linebackers are getting chopped right now by the offensive line because the defensive line not doing their job. This time a true eye set, two tight ends again. And Campbell looks to throw. It's a one-man route. Got him open in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. 29 yards on the completion to Obamati. They picked on the freshman, Ron, Antoine Stewart. Watching him in practice, they had a lot of deep throws. They were going to work on Antoine Stewart. And it was a one-man route, and he got the job done. Vaughn to attempt the extra point. Good pass, and the kick is right down the heart. So we'll take a timeout. 4.58 remaining opening quarter. It is Auburn on the strength of this long touchdown pass of 29 yards to Obamanu. And it is 14 to nothing, Tigers. We'll be right back. By this formation, Auburn's got the tight ends, and they're going to stay in the block. They're going to block. Both the running backs are going to block, and that leaves Stewart on an island out here. Can't get any help from the safety. And he just got, uh, he just got torched. And a real good throw by Jason Campbell. I mean, that ball is right on the mark. Well, for those who uh, have questioned it, his, uh, his passing ability and his accuracy that thing right there he just he put a perfect arc on it and it came down as Obamato caught this is his first touchdown pass of the year Yost to kick it off Larkins the deep end and this one a shorter he'll return this one from the six gets outside in the right for a moment 20 25 out to the 30 good field position for Tennessee to start this drive well, tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern, it's ESPN Sunday Night Football. One of the greatest NFL rivalries, the Cleveland Browns, head to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. That's the Browns versus the Steelers Sunday night, 8.30 on ESPN. Available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts with NFL Primetime presented by Miller. Miller Life at 7.30 Eastern. Mike Rashad Baker on the sideline being looked over by the training staff, and we'll try to find out as much as we can, but uh, obviously an important starter in that Tennessee secondary. Tennessee's got to find a way to take some pressure off the passing game and run the football. Quick pass, got that one complete, and that is going to be Swain, Jason Swain on the receiving end.
And Reese Davis, let's uh, check with you. All right, Ron Taco Bell takes us to Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa. Number one, Oklahoma taking on the Cyclones. 3 nothing game. Jason White gets to the corner, finds Juwan Rankins. Puts a couple of tackles to get in there. White just threw another touchdown pass. Extra point is pending. It's 15 nothing up to the second. Huskies have a lead on UCLA. Our situation, 14 to nothing. Auburn jumping out on top with two quick touchdowns in his opening quarter. Straight ahead with the running play. Hit at the line of scrimmage defensively. Don Terrius Thomas is right there to knock down Cedric Houston. And it's going to be third down in long Tennessee. I believe this is the first run of the football game for Tennessee. Uh, they've been throwing the football, but this front of Auburn's is absorbing the blocks of the down offensive lineman and Don Terrius Thomas just steps up there and makes a tackle. That's not what's happening on the other side. Third down and six. The line to make is the 42 and a half yard line. Clausen from the shotgun. Auburn shows blitz and here they come off both corners. A flag is down and the pass is thrown complete at the 45 yard line. That's enough for the first down. And now let's check the marker. It might have been Auburn offside as Tony Brown was there to gather in that pass. South Carolina last week had a lot of success blitzing Tennessee. Tennessee worked on it this week, picked up the blitz of Auburn. Illegal formation. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. The SEC is making a point of calling this when the tackles are not up as far as they're supposed to be. Ole Miss and Florida today, they must have been in double figures on calls of that very same thing this afternoon. Yeah, and you see a lot of this. Uh, a lot of wide receivers line, not lining up on the line of scrimmage, lining up in the backfield. Third down and 11. This time Auburn stays at home. Here comes pressure. And Clarkson is going to be hit and sacked for the second time tonight. And it is Carlos Dansby. Carlos Dansby, a preseason All-American. He leads this Auburn football team with 23 tackles. Number 11 is going to find his way back to the quarterback. He got rolled around the outside, but came back and made the play. Well, he's a former safety. He has extremely good speed. Colquitt with his second punt of the night. The first was a 49-yarder. And this spiral is not going to turn over. On the run, the catch is made by Trey Smith. At the 30-yard line, good coverage for the Volunteers. That'll be a return of only about four yards and 43 yards on the boot. Adrian Carston, let's check down with you. News on the special team player Rashad Baker for Tennessee, number 16. He took a heavy shot to his head, Ron, in the last series and was having trouble with his vision. Put his head back. He took a couple of eye drops. They covered each eye to see what his vision was like. Just moments ago, up and off the bench, could be active in the next series. All right, Adrian, thanks. Great hustle there. Two minutes and nine seconds is what we have left in this opening quarter, and it has been a very fast-moving quarter. Ronnie Brown will come in to uh, to start on this series, replacing uh, Cadillac Williams. Cole Bennett, the tight end in motion, and to give us to Brown on the sweep, tries to turn it up. It's going to be a couple of very tough yards right there. I keep thinking about the conversation we had with Tommy Tupperville the other day. It was cool on the practice field Thursday, and he said, I expect my offensive linemen to play a little bit better. It's cooler right now. They're, they're not under the heat, and they don't wear out as much, and his offensive line right now doesn't look like they did uh, in the first four weeks of the season. It looked good. Second down, and this is the, the first second and long situation that they've had. Campbell retreats to throw. Great protection. Throws it short and it's dropped by Cooper Watson the tight end. Looked to see where he was going to run and drop the football. Well, I tell you, Tennessee defense ever needs a stop. They need one right here. They need to get a little confidence here. Didn't look like he, he was expecting no. the football. No, nope. he sure wasn't. But if you're out in the route, every now and then check it out. <laughs> 
That's what you're out there for. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not running for pleasure. No. <laughs> Auburn in third down situations, two of two on the night. Unless they, they say, to take it to the 41 yard line. Unless they say you're going to be a decoy, but you're never a decoy. It's McIntyre in motion to the top of your screen. Here comes a blitz, and Campbell gets the pass away, and he's going to have the first down, and it's McIntyre breaking the tackle across midfield. Still on his feet, and finally forced out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Richmond finally pushed him out of bounds, but that play is good for 46 yards. Tell you what, a championship effort is Ronnie Brown. He picks up the blitz in the backfield, and then all of a sudden he protects Campbell. Now you're going to see him come down the football field. See him right there? Now that is winning football. He sets up the block, and then he gets down the football field and makes a big play. And then Constantine Richmond credit to him he ran a long way from that right defensive end position to get down and force McIntyre out of bounds Brown right up the middle he's going to take it inside the 20 yard line tackled by Omar Gaither you're going to see defense on skates right now I mean they're getting knocked off the ball uh, everything is working for Auburn's offense John Chavis one of the best defensive coordinators in the country is right now uh, trying to draw something up here to, to slow this Auburn offense down. Well, they send Ronnie Brown to the bench and they bring in fresh legs yeah. in uh, Cadillac Williams. We have 33 seconds left to play opening quarter. They give it to Williams left side and Tennessee right there up to the task on this one as the first hit made by Dickerson. And also Jason Mitchell, who had a blocked punt last week against South Carolina. This is going to be the end of the uh, first quarter. They're going to talk about to Jason Campbell what he wants to do here on third down. Mike, you have to be impressed a moment ago in the big third down play. They put pressure on him, and the youngster was calm, got the pass away. It turned into a 46-yard gain. And right now has Auburn with very good field position. Into the opening quarter, 14 to nothing Tigers. We'll be right back. So we're back. 14 to nothing at the end of the opening quarter and Auburn is threatening again now Mike this right here tells the whole story 209 first quarter yards Auburn 25 for the Tennessee Volunteers 209 headache yards because they, most of them are runs where they're knocking you back third down they need to take it to the 12 and a half yard line Williams is the lone setback it's Courtney Taylor in motion. Sets back in the pocket. Here comes pressure. He throws it out to Williams, and he drops the football. So it's going to be fourth down, and they are well within field goal range. In fact, this attempt would be of about 37 yards. Carnell was looking up to see that defensive back who was coming at him. And as you'll see right here, he just takes his eye off of it and drops the football. Pretty good job by Antoine Stewart, though, being right there to draw the look of the Cadillac. 37 yard attempt now Vaughn is three of four this year, but his longest is 22 But watching him in the pregame warm-ups. He's capable of hitting him from much further out than 22 High pass they bring it down nicely and a high tight spinner and he misses it wide to the right That's big Ron, when you talk about championship effort, if you're a football player, watch Ronnie Brown right here. Watch him pick up the blitz. First of all, that's his main job right here. They're going to come after Jason Campbell. Look at a great job. He's on the ground. Now watch him get up and run. When you have players that will do this, then you know you're going to win football games. Ronnie Brown didn't stay down. He got up and made a championship play. Jabari Davis checks in a tailback, but Clausen going to go on top and thrown just a little too far at the 36-yard line intended for James Banks. Right now, Auburn's defense got a real good bead on the Tennessee offense. First of all, they can't run the ball, and they're not giving them big pass play, so they're going to make them work. Auburn's defense 
Well, you see uh, where they rank at the NCAA. Yeah, second in the uh, yards given up. Four quarterback pressures and two sacks in the opening quarter for the Auburn Tiger defense. Well, they show blitz. Now it appears they're staying at home as crossing with an audible. Crowd trying to make sure that the other volunteers don't hear that audible. Pass near side and it is thrown low and into the dirt. Swain, the intended receiver. When you look at this game plan right now, Tennessee's just relying heavily on the pass. I'm thinking I've seen one run, I believe, in Tennessee's offense here in the quarter and early in the second quarter. Randy Sanders, offensive coordinator, wants to have mix. If you don't get mix, you get one dimensional, you're going to get beat. Well, Randy told us in our conference call with him on Wednesday that this Auburn team would be the best defense that they were to face this year. He said it may be the best one we face all year. Quick pitch. Got it. 18 yard line at the 20 and to the 24 yard line, and that is Corey Larkins. Yeah, the best weapon Tennessee has right now in offense is coming in the football game, Dustin Colquitt. Last week, he was simply amazing. He had back to back kicks that went out of bounds at the one and a half, and then the next one at the one. And I'll tell you, Tommy Tuberville said this week he was going to call for his players to catch the ball as deep as the five yard line because he didn't want to get caught the way he caught South Carolina off guard last week. Trey Smith, the man who was back deep, and here's the left footer's boot. This is good heavens. It's like it was shot out of a cannon. It turns over and caught at the 20. 25, and he'll wind up with about a 12-yard return, but it's because it was a 56-yard boot. Let's take a timeout. 14 to nothing. Auburn in a shocking fashion so far. Well, during the break, head coach Phil Fulmer, who, of course, was an offensive lineman himself, and before he became the head coach, was the offensive line coach. And he had a number of players that went into the NFL, so he is extremely accomplished when it comes. He's over there visiting with those offensive linemen right now, just saying, hey, fellas, we gotta, we got to work harder because our task is a tall one tonight. Ronnie Brown starts this series at tailback. Play action to him and to pass a little too tall. Cooper Wallace, the tight end, the intended receiver. Adrian Karsten, back to you. Ron, let's stay on the line. Tommy Tuberville's question. If we are a better team, it will be because our offensive line is better. Because we have chemistry now, it, there's no way we could have early on in the season. Those first two losses to Southern Cal and Georgia Tech. With the way they are manhandling the defensive line for Tennessee right now, Ron, all the elements in that test tube, I think, have been mixed perfectly. Yeah, I think you're right. Number 22, Trey Smith, comes in a tailback, a sophomore out of Venice, Florida. He scored in the ballgame last week against uh, Western Kentucky. And they give him the handoff on a little counterplay. Flag is down, and he takes it over the 40 to almost the 43-yard line. And from where that one's thrown, it's going to come back with a lot of offensive holding. So it was... <laughs> Let's, Tennessee is wearing those orange shoes, and it looked like a marker, and it was an orange shoe that was on the turf. It was not a marker. Philip Homer would have liked to have a marker. <laughs> Ronnie Brown is now the lone setback as uh, Trey Smith comes to the sideline. And they'll give it to Brown right up the middle. Head of steam, but he's going to be stopped after a short game. Constantine Richmond making the tackle for Tennessee. And Mike, what, uh, what adjustments are you seeing on the part of uh, John Chavis? I think John Chavis is going to move his front around a little bit, stamming and uh, doing some uh, movement to try to help the defensive lineman. As you see, Campbell's hot, one touchdown, 114 yards, and Parnell Williams, 7.3 average rushing. McIntyre, two catches for 50 yards, an average of 25 per grab by him. 12 minutes, 20 seconds left to play until halftime, and this time Brown. Spun around at the line of scrimmage. Omar Gaither got a hand on him and makes the stop. And now Auburn with a third down, and they still need to take it down to the 47-yard line. Hugh Dahl, the offensive coordinator, when we talked to him 
the other day he said I'm worried about six two five and forty one so he does when you're coaching you don't know the names of the other team but you know their numbers or six is Richmond and uh, two is Kevin Burnett third down a woman should do comes in at wide receiver and Tennessee only rushing four, but he's in the pass. It was incomplete. That was intended for uh, Omamato, who uh, caught the touchdown pass earlier, and it's going to be fourth down Auburn. Ron, now, you go back to Philip Formerman. You had that picture with him in the offensive line. I believe he's going to tell his offense, you got to start running the football. Our defense now has found the key. They're moving around defensively. They're stopping Auburn a little bit. Now the offense got to find a mix in their offensive play calling. Mark Jones is the deep man for Tennessee. First punt of the night by Auburn. Cody Bliss, who's a freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee, is the booter. Very high, good hanging spiral. And it's going to bound at the three and go into the end zone. So Tennessee will take it over at the 20. It's a 52 yard punt. Let's take a timeout. 11 24 left till intermission. ESPN's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. So we are back 14 to nothing. Auburn continues to lead. A story that has been heavy on the minds of the Tennessee Volunteer players this week. A reserve center, Chuck Crew, back in the hospital, in fact, is in critical condition. And because of privacy laws, they are not saying exactly what is wrong with him. But their starting center, Scott Wells. Scott normally wears 64, but in honor of his teammate, to let him know that their total thoughts and prayers are with Chuck Crew. He's wearing 67 tonight. From the 20, straight ahead, the running play, Jabari Davis hit at the line of scrimmage and treated very rudely. It's going to be a gain of one. And, Mike, what can they do to loosen up this what? defensive front of the Tigers? First of all, I think they ran into the wrong side right here. You got four guys on that side, and you're running into a heavy defensive uh, look. You've got to be able to check out that there's not enough people to block that set. DeMarco McNeil was the first man to be there and make contact. And then Dontarius Thomas was the next man to get there, number 54. Second down and long Tennessee. They need the 30-yard line. They need points on the board, quite frankly. And he stumbled, and Jabari Davis very upset because there were so many people in the box. There were only two people in the secondary. Yeah, if he keeps his feet, he moves on down the field. But Philip Fulmer, he's taken over this football game a little bit. He's trying to get the offensive line in this running game going. He knows if he doesn't get a running game going, he's not going to win this football game. It's, it's Church is out. About to go over 10 minutes to play until halftime. Crowd comes to life. The student section on their feet for the Auburn defense. Third down, and they need about six yards for the first. That's Mark Jones in motion back into the line of scrimmage. Clawson gets the pass in the front. The ball is tipped in. Oh, my goodness, almost intercepted by Carlos Rogers as the ball was bobbled, and that thing was there for the picking for a moment. Sometimes when you play this game, Ron, you swear the defense got 13 guys, and that's what Tennessee and Casey Clawson are trying to figure out right now. They're everywhere. C.J. Baton was the receiver. Well, you could see that when the defensive back looked up, Carlos Rogers thought, man, here is a free touchdown. And then it came off his his uh, his uh, face shade. And it means that Dustin Colquitt will have to come on and punt again. Trey Smith, the deep man. Let's see what kind of hang time he gets here. Well, he almost got to the kick. In fact, that is a wobbly kick off the side of his foot. Did they get a piece of it? I don't think so, but I think they pressured him enough Sometimes when you come after a kicker, Tommy Tuberville, he watched him against South Carolina last year, really hurt South Carolina's chances. He's coming after him this week. Anthony Mix almost got the block. We'll be right back. Dustin Cole put on the far sideline talking with some of his special team players about, I, I would imagine, 
Hey guys, give me just a yeah. fraction of a second Locked. longer because he really had to rush that one. That kick only 29 yards. They're going to come after him all night. Carnell Williams, Cadillac is the eye back. And they give it to him, to him to the right side, and he's number 24. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Ron, UCLA defensive tackle Rodney Leslie had to sit out the first half against Washington because of a punch that he threw against San Diego State. Keith Gilbertson said he wished he'd sit out the whole game. He did. His first play of the second half, he recovered that fumble in the end zone for the UCLA touchdown. And the Husky lead has been trimmed to two. South Florida on top of Louisville and former Auburn offensive coordinator Bob Petrino by seven. All righty, our situation remains 14 to nothing Auburn. 9.08 to play until halftime. Campbell sets in the pocket. Here comes the pressure and just throws this one away. And that Campbell's was a Dickerson who was really applying the pressure on uh, Jason Campbell. Yeah, this defense has settled down now. John Chavis has got them in the right spot right now. Mondre Dickerson is going to come through here and put pressure. Nobody blocked him either. Jason Campbell does a wise thing. Throw it in the tuba section. Jason Campbell looking at a third down and they need to take the ball to the Tennessee 42 at a half yard line. Here comes Tennessee with a blitz off the corner. Pass over the middle, got it to Fetzko, and that'll be enough for the first down, plus about eight more yards. Gain of 16 on the play. If you draw up a quarterback, you draw one up like Jason Campbell. He's six foot five, six foot six, and see, he can see over the offensive line. He's got big offensive linemen, six, 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 seven, but they can't get in his way because he's got such a high release. Youngster is out of Taylorsville, Mississippi, which is a classification of 2A, and he said there's not a stoplight. I don't, I don't know if I believe that at Taylorsville. Uh, only a thousand people. Right at the middle, Carnell Williams inside the 30, and he's down to around the 27. But I'll tell you, he has learned his lessons well coming from a smaller school like that, Mike. Well, he's had three different coordinators, so that has hampered his style a little bit. He said he was a basketball. He loved basketball, and his dad told him, he said, you're going to play football because there's not many tall quarterbacks in the NFL. His mom wanted him yep. to play basketball. <laughs> 7 of 12, 130 yards, and a touchdown. Sets in the pocket this time on second down and goes for the end zone. And it is caught incomplete. A runner should do. Did not get a foot down, and it's incomplete. Well, they're working on Antoine Stewart again. Number 24, the freshman. Same play they scored on. They're just trying out this freshman. They're going to make sure he he gets a little age to him tonight. That's well thrown. Real close, Ron. Real close. Oh, boy. Tommy Tuberville is storming down the sideline right now. He wants to throw the beanbag, but there's no beanbag in college football. The only thing I can figure is that the official who was there did not think he had control yeah. of the football. Third down. Right up the middle, Cadillac, and he'll take it down inside the 25 to around the 21-yard line. So the Tigers will move the chains again. Ron, when this, when you look at this game, Tommy Tuberville against Villa Fulmer, they were against each other recruiting Carnell Williams. Tennessee had him. Tommy Tuberville took his whole staff over to the home of Carnell Williams and talked him into coming to Auburn. Good look into the eyes of Cadillac. First down, the ball just outside the 20, gets the handoff again. And the hand of steam ball is loose. And Tennessee's got it. It sure looks like it. Tennessee has recovered. Recovered by Jabari Greer. So the Tigers squandered two opportunities. They missed the field goal. No points there. And now with the drive going strong, and they turn it back to the Volunteers at the 19. But their defense has the offense of Tennessee well in tow because they cannot move the football. Jabril Wilson, Wilson is the man who knocked the ball loose. Tennessee's got to find something on offense in the running game. 
Jabari Davis is the tailback. This time, Clausen from under center, and he hands it off to Davis, and it, boy, penetration defensively, he's not going to have anything. In fact, he may have lost a yard on the play. You were talking about Auburn always having short yardage on second and third. Eddie Grant goes going over to Cadillac and hitting a Cadillac on the bumper and saying, hey, big fella, you're going to make a lot of runs for us. Don't feel bad about that fumble. Don't let it happen again. Let me, let me tell you this. Boy, does that even put more of a spotlight on the no call on the end zone to a Roma should do when yeah. the touchdown oh. was not given after the turnover on the very next play. You think the fans forgot that? <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 11. Clausen now with an audible. He's got plenty of time. The play clock is still at 11. But the crowd's not trying to help. Swings it out in the backfield. Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage. Carlos Dansby is right there to make the tackle on him. And Dansby has been everywhere. Came down to Alabama, Notre Dame, and Auburn. Dad's a minister. And Carlos Dansby chose to come to be a Tiger. You see him break on the ball, now break down and make the tackle on Jabari Davis. Probably the best compliment that his coaches paid to him, and that is he does things every ball game that you can't coach. And Rodney also said he's the smartest linebacker we've ever had here. Joe Yip, the linebacker coach, high praise for Carlos Stansby. Third down, they need to take it to the 29-yard line. Flags everywhere. And it looked like Sean Young came out of his stance. This is going to turn into a third down and 16 now. Ron, I'd hear one out here Dead if ball. I was Tennessee. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. I'd try to see if one of my wide receivers could outrun one of these corners and let it put it up because everything is. is not going well for the offense. Not allowed a third down conversion in the first half in their last four games. Pretty good. Zero for 21. Cedric Houston reports in a tailback, number 21. Dansby on the corner. Here he comes on the blitz. They try to pick it up. Pressure on Clawson, and he's sacked at the two-yard line. That is Eddins, the third time that Auburn has gotten to him tonight. This is the fifth punt of the night by Tennessee, and he's not going to get a full 15-yard drop here, Mike. No, he's going to have to rock and kick. Edens just came untouched by the offensive line. Good, good kick. Wobbly spiral. Trey Smith back to the 44. Return to the left. And he's going to be stopped at around the 49-yard line. That's going to be 52 yards on the kick and six on the return. Let's take a timeout. Still all Tigers. Well, tonight's Aflac trivia question. What player has the highest single-game receiving total in the Tennessee-Auburn series? We'll be able to have that answer a little bit later on. And this picture up in the end zone, and we're not trying to say this is the answer, but uh, Pat Sullivan and Terry Beasley, that there is a strong possibility. But we'll tell you in just a while. This time last week, we were talking about the opportunities at good field position that Tennessee had squandered. Now the shoe is beginning to be on the other foot as Auburn with a 14 to nothing lead, but they have not taken advantage of good field position, Mike. Well, they would say they did. They had it. They would say they had a touchdown pass called back, uh, but they haven't. And you're right. And so that momentum can swing. But when you look at this ball, football game right now, Ron, the running game for Auburn is set up the play action pass because right. they've hit the two bombs, the one they called out of bounds, but they hit them. Tennessee doesn't have any running game, so they can't get anything going uh, in the play action passing game. So everything becomes a drop back pass, and they really are one dimensional right now, and that's bothering uh, Randy Sanders, and it's got to be bothering Phil Fulmer. 
Uh, and we talk about that all the time when we say, you know, well, with no running game, play action means absolutely nothing. But it is one of the reasons that Auburn has been able to control so much in this first half. However, in the second quarter, some good adjustments by John Chavis. And right now, down 14 points. Mike, if they were able to get the ball back and put something in the end zone, as much of a difference between 260 and 31 yards, still, they could go in at halftime trailing by only a touchdown. Yeah, this is a big series. You're right. Exactly right. they got to stop them right here and hope they can get in only behind 14 nothing and make some adjustments. Campbell had to call the timeout a moment ago. Gets this pass out to McIntyre. A flag is down and he stopped after a gain of seven yards. And we know this is not a shoe. This is a flag. And Steve Shaw says holding against Auburn. That is the first Auburn penalty of the night. And Tommy Tuberville said it's not holding. We shouldn't have had that call. You know the offensive coordinator is also the offensive line coach. And uh, some people question that. And it, and yeah, uh, you've got an explanation yeah. of why that is not a problem to no. have an offensive line coach as an offense coordinator. No, it's not. And uh, we'll get into that. So it's going to be first down and twenty. And the way Hugh is pacing right there, you would think his ball club was down fourteen to nothing. Cadillac Williams in motion. Trey Smith gets the handoff. Wow, banged at the line of scrimmage and knocked down. And this is going to be a loss. Let's check back with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Ron, the SEC West flexing its muscle in our game, and they did so likewise in the swamp. Ole Miss down 17-13 to Florida. But Sean Pearson going in. That turned out to be the game-winning touchdown. Archie Manning's family success in the swamp. Finally, 20 to 17 Ole Miss wins. Georgia put a whipping on Alabama, 37-23. Hey, congratulations to David Cutcliffe and his staff, and also Eli Manning. He uh, will have beaten Florida his uh, last two years in college. And, uh, a lot of folks can't say that as this running play goes to the 50. Ron, you talk about Auburn. You talked about Hugh Knowles pacing and like he's behind. He knows they're missing opportunities. Missed field goal right here. That would have been three on. Then the fumble. The Cadillac got hit, coughed run up. And then the uh, penalty on the, uh, or the missed call on the uh, touchdown pass. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the Tennessee 38 yard line. Safeties were up tight, and now they back off for the bottom tiers. Campbell under heavy pressure, running for his life, but he sacked way back at the 35-yard line. That's Constantine Richmond, and the huge thing about that, Mike, that is a loss of almost 20 yards on the play. Yeah, Constantine Richmond does a nice job. Kevin Burnett gets in there also. Constantine stays with him and pulls Jason Campbell down by the shoes. We talked about him as he grew up in Germany. He was a sprinter when he weighed about 220 pounds and had a 10-8 in the 100 meters. So there's a timeout. We'll take it with him. 2.43 left until halftime. Ball's about to get it back. Cody Bliss standing back to punt it away for the Auburn Tigers. Jones is the deep man for the Tennessee Volunteers. Mark has dropped off to around the 17. This is only the second punt of the night by Auburn because they have controlled the ball so well in offense. Tennessee comes after him, but it is a good high-hanging spiral. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 15-yard line. Well, the answer to tonight's Athlete trivia question. What player has the highest single game receiving total in the Tennessee Auburn series? The answer, 1982 Willie Galt, 174 yards for the Tennessee Volunteers. Auburn won the game, however, 24 to 14 here at Jordan Hare Stadium. You tried to trick the people. That's right, uh, deception. <laughs> you're disguising like Will Herring is the safety. He's trying to disguise his coverages so Casey Clawson doesn't know what he's in. Cedric Houston is the tailback. Tennessee trying to get something going on offense. Total yards, they have 31 right now. 253 Auburn. Clawson sets a screen to the left side. This is Fleming, the fullback, and he's rocked out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. 
All right, Ryan, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, complete highlights of the day in the SEC, including we'll show you just how Ole Miss pulled off that upset in the swamp. And the question was, was Texas tough enough? And I think they answered that question against Kansas State today. And Michigan head coach Lloyd Carr is still trying to figure out how his team outgained Iowa by 168 yards and still lost. We will answer those questions for you when Trev Mark and I return in just a bit, Ron. All righty. Yep, those uh, stats can be deceiving sometimes. Swings this one out, and he has it to Houston. Cedric Houston hit immediately. Nice defense, Carlos Rogers, the junior out of Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, Trump Alberts is right. Uh, Texas with a big win. And you mentioned last or two weeks ago, you not only play Kansas State, but then you got to go back to back with Oklahoma, Kansas State. Two weeks, so congratulations, Mac Brown. Benson Young, the young quarterback out of Houston, Madison. With a really good job today in that ball game. This pass thrown complete to Tony Brown. Tony's going to have the first down, and he'll move it out to the 39 before Dontarius Thomas makes the tackle. And the clock will stop momentarily while they move the chains. And Tennessee has plenty of time. 146 showing on the clock. Yeah, Tennessee still with two timeouts. Gene Chiswick, the defensive coordinator, doing a good job. And all of a sudden, now they're playing a little more too deep here. DeMarco McNeil who has had a real problem with injury, comes looking off the field. We'll try to check on him. T.J. Jackson will check in replacing him, number 58. Clausen's pass. Boy, that one was low and away from James Banks. Tony Brown also in the area. Talked about Gene Chiswick coming from Central Florida here as a defensive coordinator. He has really came up with a uh, excellent game plan here in the first half against Tennessee's offense. Well, they lost three defensive backs off that team last year, and they have uh, done a good job of replacing them. Here comes a blitz. There's Herring with the blitz. Pass is caught at the 45, at the 40. A little bit of a foot race as James Banks comes up with magic again 29 yards and Clausen paid for it Harry and the guy you were talking about really put a lick on him he paid for it but he does what a great quarterback will do he stands in there and takes the hit from the safety will Herring a lot of time for Tennessee with two timeouts 123 now the clock is whistled back in by Steve Shaw and they are moving into the noisy part of the stadium where the students are located. Swings this one out in the flat. Has it complete. And inside the 20-yard line, Cedric Houston. And now, all of a sudden, the Tennessee Volunteers taking advantage and moving the football. That's 14 yards. Sign of a good coaching staff is to make adjustments. Uh, and all of a sudden, Philip Fulmer's group, Randy Sanders, on the drop-back passing game, hitting the uh, swing routes out of the backfield, hitting Tony Brown down the football field. Happy to report for Auburn fans, DeMarco McNeil checks back into the line of big number 92. Senior out of Pritchard, Alabama. First down, Tennessee. Clawson, short drop, throws this one, tries to set middle screen to Swain, and Swain still on his feet. He'll go inside the 10, and he's close to the first down, but I don't think he's going to have it. I think he'll miss it by one. Well, when you throw that quick screen, the athletic ability of Jason Swain really comes through right there because he just made Auburn's defensive guys miss. You know, an interesting thing about the youngster also, the coaching staff said really great natural instincts, but they didn't get him until July. He was not there for spring ball, and it, they were impressed with the fact that he was coming on very quickly with the limited number of practices that he's had. See, what a lot of freshmen do now, Ron, is they report in the summer. They'll go to summer school, and then they'll go out and practice with the quarterbacks. Case Lawson will organize the pass patterns. He missed it. Cadillac Williams on the sideline, 94 yards for him in the first half, an average of almost seven per try. Should be a great second half because Carnell Cadillac Williams has really opened up running the ball real well in the first quarter. Tennessee kind of shut him down in the second quarter where he catches the screen pass. 
and then skates the outside and then makes a cut and it came down to Tennessee and Auburn for where Cadillac Williams is going to play his college football. Mike, uh, we, I talked about Casey Clawson, about what a cool customer he is off the top of the telecast. On this drive, he is 7 of 8 for 75 yards. They may try to work, run one right here because they got two timeouts. Second down and short, and that's exactly what they do straight ahead. Houston takes it inside the five, and it's first and goal. Tennessee Dansby on the stop for the Auburn Tigers. That was a good call because you got two timeouts, and you also pick up the first down, and it stops the clock. And then you run right at Auburn. So uh, a good play call by Randy Sanders. Now, last week we saw the fade against South Carolina in this part of the field. In the overtime, James Banks, as you have stated, the large receiver, the pass thrown in the flat caught at the one-yard line. He did not get in. Troy Fleming, the fullback, trying to cross him up a little bit here. A great tackle. Kept Kevin Hobbs makes this tackle and kept Troy Fleming out of the end zone. Tries to turn up and Kevin Hobbs will not let him in the end zone. Kevin Hobbs is a heck of a story. He's a walk on does not have a scholarship yet, but they say the only way to describe him total blue collar loves to hit and loves to come to practice. Ron right now with one timeout I'd run this football right here because you know you got the timeout to stop the clock and then you control. Uh, one try to throw one in Casey Clawson not known for his quarterback sneaking and they're going to put more time on the clock I tell you this is a good officiating oh, as Steve Shaw is one of the best yeah as as I said off the top of the telecast I think he's one of the best in the country and they run the game Tenth play, run them. tenth play of the drive. It started back at their own 16-yard line. Jabari Davis is a short yardage back because well, he's the man at the top of the eye. They give it to him. He hurdles. Touchdown, Tennessee Volunteers. Scott Wells, who is wearing the jersey of his teammate who is in critical condition in the hospital back in Knoxville wearing number 67 for Chuck Prue with an outstanding block on the play. I know when I talked to Cedric Houston on the practice field a week ago he said I know when we get inside the five yard line Jabari is coming in because he is the guy they like to run that over the top play. James will Hoyt to attempt the extra point trying to make this a seven point ball game. Good pass and he knocks it home. Now, and the guy's back in the studio as we take one more look at the touchdown. Just how deceiving stats can be, gentlemen. This is a good example right here. All of a sudden, Tennessee is over 100 yards in the first half, but the totals 252 Auburn, 115 Tennessee, and all of a sudden, the Volunteers are just a touchdown away. Well, it goes back to the missed opportunities. Yep. Missed field goal, the fumble, the pass that uh, Auburn fans and coaches thought they were in for and would have been a touchdown. They didn't get that call. And all of a sudden, right now, Philip Palmer goes in the locker room feeling pretty good about himself. Well, feeling the, pretty good about his team. Well, this guy right here, Casey Clawson, eight of nine on the drive. And Jason ten. Campbell, outstanding first half. They're going to have to go in and talk it over at halftime and uh, start yeah. putting the same success together they had in that opening 15 minutes. And when you go back, when you think about Casey Clawson right now, he's got to be thinking about we get the ball when we come out in the second half, so we get a chance to take it right to him again. I don't think they're going to kick this ball to Cadillac. In fact, everybody is squib moving kick. up. Should be a squib kick or pop it up. Well, they have worked on that pop up, the pooch kick. Tennessee, we talked about that last week. Worked a very long time, and it's going to be the high pop up. Going to be caught at the 20 yard line. And that's Trey Smith, and he will take it to around the 28. Sunday ABC Sports takes you to Woodstock Georgia for the final round action of the World Golf Championships the American Express Championship Sunday at 1 30 on ABC.
And here are your totals going into that uh, final round. Tiger with a two-stroke lead over VJ Singh, who has been so hot this year. Tim Heron, only three off at five under par. The one run by Ronnie Brown or take a knee here. Reggie Torber on the bench looking on and it'll be Ronnie Brown who will take it to the right side and he will go down and that should be the final play of this first half here on the Plains in Auburn, Alabama. So we are at halftime. Adrian Carston, let's go down to you. Coach, first of all, how fortunate do you feel just to be down by seven? Well, I do feel fortunate. You know, they've gotten after us there. First quarter, we settled down and finally got a little bit done offensively. So we'll adjust and hopefully come back and play better offensively in the second half. I think defensively we've settled down enough. You still need a ground game. How do you get that going? Well, we need to get it going. I don't know. But if they're going to play zero coverage and all those people in there, we'll throw it too. See you shortly. Ron. All righty, our halftime score is Auburn 14, Tennessee 7. Now here's Reese Davis with the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Reese. All right, Ron, Trev Alberts, Mark May with me as always. Guys, you know, this in some ways reminiscent of the Tennessee-Florida game. Mm -hmm. Florida controlled the entire first half. Tennessee with a Hail Mary at the end grabbing momentum and that late drive grabbing some momentum this time. Mark. I think it goes back to their quarterback. He's a senior leader in Casey Clawson, and I think when you have a senior that is a leader, and they know it's their last time around to play college football, they want to win every game. And for Casey Clawson, he's got that desire to win. He will not let his team lose. He's been in these situations before. He knows what to do offensively. He's not going to make that crucial mistake. He's going to lead his team. I want to talk about Auburn's offense, and I don't want to be overly simplistic here, but I thought you could tell early in the game, first series, Cadillac Williams, three carries for 37 yards. They have 100 yards rushing at the end of the first quarter. Different Auburn offense. Of course, that opens up the play action pass and Jason Campbell has been so much better. The bottom line for Auburn offensively now just can't turn the ball over. They're doing very well offensively. Second half, keep the same game plan and Auburn can win this game. And this is the Auburn we expected to see Absolutely. from the very beginning of the season. They've been impressive on offense and on defense. When we continue on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, we'll take you down to Austin where the kicking game loomed large for both Texas and K-State in that showdown. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is fueled by the newly redesigned 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Fuel for the soul. Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report starts in Austin, Kansas State and Texas. Texas native from Baytown, L. Roberson back to the Wildcats. And what a run, guys. Outstanding job by L. Roberson. Will not be denied. Will not go down. Makes moves inside and outside. And it's blocked. Whoa! Woo Heck of a block by James Terry on the play. It's a 17-12 game now for K-State. Got a safety and Terry making more big plays. Little middle screen and he's turning on the Jets. That would set up a Roberson touchdown. Kansas State two-point conversion, 20 to 17. Bench Young played a lot of clutch series for the Longhorns. Sits in the pocket beautifully. Look at the gun he has all the way down the field. What a beautiful catch by Tony Jeffrey, and that's going to set up this right here. Quarterback sneak into the end zone for Texas. On fourth and goal, no less. Brown going for it. Texas wins it, 24 to 20 over K State. Colorado and Baylor. Baylor been a punching bag in the Big 12, but they did a little fighting back right here. Jamal Harper scooping and scoring. Baylor taking the 28-23 lead. Now fourth and goal for the Buffs. And look at the Baylor defense. Brian Calhoun, nowhere to go. They stuff him down on the goal line. And the Baylor offense. They would set a high water mark for scoring in Big 12 games. Here's Rashad Armstrong. Rashad Armstrong going to the outside. Look at the wall set up by the right tackle and right guard. He's down the sideline. They can't catch him. He's going all the way. 55 yards for the touchdown. Three straight wins for the first time since 1996. They'd lost 37 of 38 Big 12 games. Baylor over Colorado. Colorado 42-30 and the goal post coming down in Waco. Ole Miss and Florida. Chris Lee finding O.J. Small with a spectacular grab by O.J. 14-3 and then here's Ronald McClendon. Look at the Ole Miss offensive line. Huge hole. Ronald McClendon reads the block right up the middle. Has the speed. Gets in the end zone. Only down 14-10. And now in the waiting moments down four. Sean Pearson puts the Rebels on top. 20 to 17. Leak, the freshman, trying to save his team, but he threw three picks against that maligned Ole Miss secondary. Ole Miss knocks off the Gators 20 to 17 
in the swamp. Absolute first half meltdown for Alabama against Georgia. Bo Freeland has his punt blocked. Thomas Davis scoops and scores. They fumble the ensuing kickoff and DJ Shockley to Jamario Smith. Beautiful play action pass. Look at the motion. Nobody is covering Jamario Smith. Touchdown, Georgia. Then the second quarter, look at David Green sit in the pocket beautifully. Who are you going to go to on the goal line? How about Ben Watson, the big tight end? 37 to 10, and the dogs go on to win. 37 coming in the first half against Alabama, too. 37 to 23 in the Big Ten. Michigan and Iowa. John Navarre, Braylon Edwards. The Wolverines seem to be rolling here. Right here, Nathan Chandler finds Calvin Davis, six yards for the score, but Chandler's not done. Look at Chandler again, 31 yards right here. Roman Ochoa for the touchdown. Hawkeyes would take a 30-20 to 20 lead, but Navarre tries to get Michigan back in it. Under four minutes to go, he'll find Edwards again. And a huge day for John Navarre. Look at this, Braylon Edwards, perfect strike for the score, but Iowa. On fourth and 12, Navarre. Right here. With fire incomplete. And despite dominating statistically, Jeremy Lesur and the Wolverines go down 30 to 27 is the final in that game. We'll touch on both of those games in just a moment. Let's go back to the Texas-Kansas State game right now. You wanted to see toughness from the Longhorns. Did you see a little? Yes, I did. I saw a lot of toughness. This game reminded me of two heavyweights standing there in the ring and just absorbing the blows. But, you know, so many times we've talked about Mac Brown and these big games and how they can't get it done. I think he answered the bell as well. I think two key plays or calls as a coach in this game. First of all, having the courage to go for it on fourth and one down on the goal line. I thought that was a huge coaching move and the right move. And then I think Vincent Young, to put him in the game in crucial situations. Texas is a completely different different team when Vincent Young is the game. I think Mac Brown answered the call as well. A great job of coaching for him. I go back to the Florida game in Florida and Ole Miss and what Ole Miss was able to do in this football game. Not on the offensive side of the ball. They rushed the ball very effectively, 223 yards. The defensive side of the ball, particularly the defensive pass secretary. One of the worst in the nation, if not the worst. They got torched last week for 650 yards plus. They came up with three big interceptions against Florida and shut out the Florida offense in the second half. They did indeed step up and all of a sudden you know that the Gator faithful not going to be happy with what transpired in Fire games Ron, Zook, Tom, but Tom, uh, maybe not maybe we can get rid of that just ask the question i know you're just out here to serve the people <laughs> down in austin this <laughs> afternoon chris fowler lee corso and kirk herb street were there for the texas and kansas state game it was a hard fought affair chris it was reese thank you as you know there is a tradition with the tower when it's lit up burn orange that's a good thing it means a football victory and as you guys pointed out this was a Big win for Texas, an even bigger game coming up next week, of course. I think it was a, an 88-yard, 10-play drive in which a redshirt freshman, Vincent Young, truly came of age after it looked like he was going to get knocked out of the game. All but two of those 10 plays in that game-winning drive, either runs or passes by Young. Well, you know, Trev talk about what Vince Young, how looked good he looked. You should have seen him in person, Trev. This guy is a very impressive athlete, and I was especially impressed with his toughness. He gets hurt in this ball game, hurts his ankle, and then comes back. Now, if, if you don't want to watch this, it's go kick because it's really like... Ooh! Now this guy comes back from that and hits Tony Jeffries here, which sets up the winning touchdown. Vince Young was tremendous today, and I thought he showed toughness, he showed leadership, he showed athletic ability. I'm telling you, he's got a shot at Oklahoma, this kid. He can move around. Well, he has so much athletic yeah. ability, and his future is bright in Austin. I thought the key in this football game was late in the game, in the fourth quarter, Kansas State started to come on. They had scored already 17 points. They recovered a big fumble by Nathan Vasher. It looked like they might be going in for the knockout punch, and this was a crucial play. L. Roberson, who was starting the Find his groove and getting some momentum going. Fumbles the ball. Philip Giger puts the big hit on him. Uh, Texas comes up with it. And that decision, fourth down to go for it after already giving up the, the lead and giving up 17 points to go for it on fourth down after all the talk about Texas. Do they go out to try to win games going for it on fourth down instead of just kicking that field goal to maybe send it into overtime? Very good call. And that was the difference in the game. The attitude from Texas in the fourth quarter. They won to win this game. Heartbreaker for Roberson. He's a Texas native. That was the bad hand, the left hand that he lost that exactly. football out of it. And as for that decision with 520 to play, down three to go for it in fourth and go, here's what Mack Brown had to say. Well, Kansas State has so much firepower and they've won a lot of football games and we knew that we were going to have to score again in the fourth quarter because we thought they had the ability to come back and score and we knew they'd have poor field position even if we didn't make it.
Give a shout to the Texas defense as well. They hold K-State to 1 for 12 on third down. Rubberson only 5 of 18. The Michigan-Iowa game. You talk about one of the all-time defensive turnarounds. Iowa's getting destroyed oh. in the second half. Only five first downs for Michigan. Well, I think the big difference in what Iowa was able to do in the second half is they went back to their strength on defense, and that's attacking. They seem to really put the pressure on both the uh, running game of Chris Perry and also John Navarre, and being able to attack that that really turned this game around and gave Iowa a chance to win. You look at Iowa, you look what they did last week against Michigan State. They didn't play with the same competitive nature. Two weeks ago against Arizona State, they did. Their challenge from here on out is circle the wagons and play with this kind of attitude that they demonstrated today. That was a big win after what happened at East Lansing last week. And I was impressed, Kirk. In fact, they fell behind 10 points. The coaching staff didn't panic. They stayed with their offensive game plan of Fred Russell running, Nate Chandler throwing the ball. By the way, Nate Chandler threw for 190. 95 yards, the best he's ever done. This I was a good-looking, well-coached football team. Going to be some wild conference races. Yeah, One more yeah. footnote in this game. No team has ever lost its Big 12 opener and then gone on to win the division. That's a note for K-State, but they're not out of it. They certainly have a chance in that Big 12 North. Those guys, back to you in the studio. All right, Chris, the towers burn orange in Austin, and uh, orange got burnt in Auburn early. Jason Campbell to Ben Obamanu. Tigers up by seven. This halftime report is fueled by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Trojans found a running attack. He is freshman Lendale White. Went for a buck 40, couple of touchdowns. USC roars away from Arizona State, who is just floundering. 37-17 final. Sooners are going to be unblemished when they roll in for the Red River shootout against Texas next week. They're pounding Iowa. It's time to put Jason White on your Heisman list already. 325. He's played terrific all year, Mr. May. He's been there. And there's no question. He should. He's been there for a while. And UCLA coming from 13 nothing down at one point against Washington. 25-16 is now the score in that game. We've got a second half not too far away. Balls and Tigers in a fairly tight. Back on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Well, Sunday night football coming your way this weekend, 8.30 Eastern Time. Of course, we'll get you ready for that at 7.30 Eastern Time. Of course, Minnesota off to its best start since 1960. That was when the Gophers won the national championship last six and oh. Was your I did not say uh, that. Well. But they are full eligible, barring weird circumstances. Wisconsin with a 30 to 23 win over Penn State. Nittany Lions lose the game. Might have found a quarterback. Michael Robinson throws for 379, the second best in the school single game list. Got a second half to go from the Plains. First half was exciting and entertaining. We expect more of the same. Saturday night here on ESPN in an awfully good ball game. Auburn looked as though they're going to run away and hide. 14 to 7. They lead it to break. And Mike Godfrey, all I could hear anybody say at halftime is missed opportunities. Yeah, a bunch by Auburn. And uh, even the last time when they got the ball in the 50 yard line, tried to throw the football and got a holding call and then got knocked back. And then they gave the ball back to Tennessee. And they showed life. So, uh, not good for Auburn, but good for Tennessee to go in at half that way. And James Banks, uh, hey, you know, he's been the, the guy who was in the right spot at the right time. And uh, we're going to go back and, and look at his very timely catch to keep that drive alive. As you saw, Larkins, he's the deep guy. Philip Yost will kick it off for the Auburn Tigers. Not going to return this one. This is going to be almost out of the back of the end zone. Well, let me take you back. Gainesville, Florida. Just before halftime, Hail Mary. James Banks was offered basketball scholarships at both Purdue and Indiana. Soft hands, ball is tipped, comes up with the catch, touchdown. Just a moment ago at the end of the first half, watch James Banks. Ball is tipped right there. The soft hands again, Mike, and he, he kept the drive going. He'd have been a big guy on jump balls because you knew he was going to get to the basketball. So uh, two famous tipped 
balls to James Banks, and uh, you're right, he reacts well to it. James, of course, a sophomore out of Indianapolis, and a discussion on the part of the it's officials. Flag down. Uh huh. And uh, it is thrown at the 16 yard line. Now, the kick went back into the end zone for a touchback. The crowd's beginning to boo here, and I don't know why, but as the discussion goes on, we'll uh, see what uh, Steve Shaw and his uh, group comes up with. It's going to be a personal foul on somebody. Yeah, it, it has to be. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Wow, so Tennessee takes the ball over at the 35-yard line. And that's the last thing you want if you're a coaching staff at Auburn because the ball's kicked out of the end zone. It's not going to be returned. Exactly. You can see Tommy Tuberville, not a happy camper right now. Cedric Houston, the tailback of the Tennessee Volunteers to open the second half and Clawson with an audible. Short drop to throw, got it complete right over here on the near sideline. And there's James Banks again. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Tommy Tuberville starts the second half, obviously more than a little bit frustrated, Ron, for one reason, because he thinks he gave Jason Campbell, his quarterback, too much freedom in the second quarter. Slowed him down. They got away from their ground game, which is where they want to get back to get that pace they had in the first quarter. Secondly, Harris Harrelson, the starting defensive end for Tennessee, doubtful in the second half. Significant because if they're going to keep Campbell contained, he's the guy on the outside who would do that. Okay. By the way, nice new suspenders, Adrian. Puts up fade route. James Banks can't get to that one just a little too far. Working against Kevin Hobbs, and it goes as an incompletion. Ron, when Casey Clawson comes out of the huddle, he's got his play. He's looking for number 35, the safety, Will Herring. He's going to find him to try to locate what the coverage is. But Will Herring's doing a great job of popping all over the place and Third. confusing Casey Clawson. Third down conversions. Tennessee, one of six. The line to make is the 45-yard line. Here's Herring. Watch. See if he tries to move around a little bit to confuse Clawson. Drops back in coverage, got the pass right in front of Herring, and it'll be enough for the first down if James Banks is on the receiving end of that one. I think right now Casey Clawson may have been confused early in the first half, but he's not confused anymore. He's looking at Herring, trying to figure out what he's doing, trying to get the coverage that Auburn secondary is in. Now this right here does not surprise me at all. No huddle by Tennessee. Well, they're going to try to keep Auburn from doing as much as they did in the first half. Gain of 10 in that last play with the quick pass to Banks. And it gives you a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the, the play clock has still got seven. They go to Houston, cuts it back up into the middle, and he is going to take it for a gain of about five yards in the play to the 44. This is a good move by Tennessee because it restricts Auburn dancing all over the place and uh, giving different fronts. And Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders, now you see Philip with that headset on, he's very active in this football game. Right now, they're trying to slow down the substitutions of Auburn and the coverages that Auburn's given Tennessee in the first half. You see, even right now, 19, 18 seconds on the play clock, worlds of time to call the audible. They snap it quickly, and on this running play, this is where Auburn just absolutely destroys you. Carlos Dansby on the play, which is a little slow developing, they'll run you down from behind. Yeah, Carlos Dansby doesn't get blocked. He comes off the corner right here, and there's nobody to pick him up, and he makes the tackle on Cedric Houston. But what Casey Clawson's got to do a better job, Ron, up is the cadence because all of a sudden you can't get a guy roaring down the field like uh, Carlos Dansby is. You got to try to pull him off sides. Third down, they need to take it to the Auburn 39 yard line to keep this drive going. There's Herring. He's right up here right now. Then he backs off. Five step drop, got the pass over the middle, and it is caught for the first down, and that's Tony Brown. Downtown Tony Brown. No, this uh, case, first down Tony Brown. Yeah, Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator, when we talked to him, about, you see Herring, first of all, 
He's stepping up there, trying to show Casey Clawson a different look, and then backs out. But Gene Chesick, the defense coordinator, was worried about James Banks and Tony Brown. Will Herring, by the way, a redshirt freshman out of Opelika, which is a suburb, literally, of Auburn. Running play with Houston. Tries to bounce it outside. Nothing doing. 54. Thomas wanted the first men there. And a little bit of a frustration on the part of Houston. You could see the Auburn coaches, they wanted an unsportsmanlike yeah. call against Cedric for literally spiking the ball. Talking about Will Herring, the safety, Ron, you talked about redshirt freshman. When I talked to him on the practice field, he said, I want to make sure that Casey Claus, we put the game in his hands to beat us rather than the running game. So if I can disguise well enough, we'll make him make decisions. Eighth play of the drive. Remember, it started back at the 35-yard line because of the personal foul against the Auburn Tigers. Play action. They throw the screen at Banks. No place to run. What a defensive play at the 41 yard line by Dexter Murphy. And then a lot of help from some other blue shirts. Now, Ron, we bragged on Dustin Coquit. Uh, still got another down here, but I was getting ready to set up the, the punt on fourth down. But Tennessee wants to, the third down to try to get the first down. So I'm going to play ahead of myself. Third down. And they need to take it down to the 28-yard line. You see Dustin on the far sideline loosening up. And Clausen wants to call a timeout. He'll stop the clock with 11.21 left in the third quarter. And we'll take the break with him. It remains 14-7 Auburn Tigers. So we are back, 14 to 7. The Auburn Tigers continue to lead, but considering that they led 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter and had dominated Tennessee, what a turnaround the Volunteers have made in this football game. A big third down play here, Ron. Banks and Tony Brown are the go-to receivers for Tennessee. Because of the sack yardage coming off, total offense rushing. You can see a minus five for the Volunteers on the ground. Here comes Herring on a blitz, but they run away from that position, and Clawson's going to run it at the 35, and he'll go down at the 33, short of the first down. Good play call by Tennessee, oh, because they ran away from the blitz side, but Auburn did a good job of covering it. Fourth down and five. You get a good look at Carlos Dansby. What a difference he has made in this football game tonight. Mike talked about his background and the, the decision that he made as you look at a field goal attempt coming up. And this is going to be an attempt of 47 yards. That's going to be 50, and it's James Wilhoyt, an attempt of 50 yards from the left hash mark. And it is a knuckleball. Wide and low to the left. So a victory for the Auburn defense on that one right there, Mike Godfrey. And Phillip knows full well that how much more momentum they could have grabbed if he was able to hit that 50-yarder right there. And Ron, you can bet one thing. Now, with Auburn coming back on the field, they are going to get Cadillac. And and Ronnie Brown, and they're going to heat up their running game. So Jason Campbell goes under center. He wants to throw on first down. Zips this one complete at the 39-yard line. And knocked out of bounds is Courtney Taylor, the redshirt freshman out of Carrollton. Starting the second half with Ronnie Brown in the tailback position. You know, Mike, I talked to the two tailbacks uh, on Thursday as soon as practice was over. And Carnell's not a big talker, but Ronnie Brown said, you know, it makes you, when you got two guys that are sharing time, it makes you work harder to hone your skills. And they're friendly about this, uh, this alternating. Well, Brown's got a big opening here around across the 45 and out to around the 50-yard line. It's a gain of 10, and Kevin Simon comes over to make the tackle. 
Looked like Ronnie Brown in the hole made somebody miss because uh, Tennessee's got an open guy here. Now, just well blocked. Well, Simon with a great effort to catch him with a shoestring. Mapu had an opportunity to make the tackle, but they did a good job on Richmond. They chopped him and kept him from pursuing the play from behind. I'd be surprised if you don't have two runs per every pass. Well, Brown into the short side of the field. Has five, has ten. Cut it off at ten yards. Robert Keyes, the middle linebacker, is there to make the tackle. And you know, that is one of the few times that we have mentioned Robert's name in this ball game tonight, yeah. Mike. They have done a good job blocking Tennessee's defense. Ronnie Brown gets a good block from uh, Crittenden. The right guard, number 65. Well, you see the comparison of the two backs. Cadillac almost at 100. Now Brown over the 50-yard mark. And they hand it off to Brown again. Stiff arm. And that gain is going to be close to 10 yards again. Rashad Baker came up to make the tackle. And boy, Ronnie Brown has come up lame. It looks like the hamstring all of a sudden on that run right there jumped up and bit him Brandon Johnson with a great block on Kevin Simon that was able to spring Ronnie Brown good hand for Brown the training staff coming over to meet him on the sideline and Cadillac will check back into the lineup yeah, good one two punch and I'm telling you three is really good too. Brandon Jacobs yeah he's uh, you can see how frustrated uh, Ronnie Brown is. I hope he didn't pull that hamstring too badly. Cadillac Williams hammers his way at left guard. Now a late flag coming down in the secondary. It's Prince Pollard to back judge through that flag. Well, you could see Jason Campbell. He said personal foul against us. After the play, personal foul against Auburn. That'll be 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. The play made a first down, so it will be first and 10. Some unusual penalties in this ballgame. Yeah. Post-play fouls. Had to come late, too. Uh, but Prince Pollard was right on top of the call. Nobody from Auburn is questioning that call. No, they're not. They probably but saw it, too. Here's the situation in the colleges, which we hearken back to and we talk about it all the time, is if they had given us a number, we would have a better opportunity of figuring out exactly, you know, how it occurred and when it occurred. Sideline warning. That's the second warning for Auburn. Sideline warning. Yeah, I... I know when you're on the sideline, you'd like to get as close as you can, but for the safety of the players and the officials, you have got to get back. Well, the lines are, are drawn differently in this day and time. You see that restraining line, and as Mike was talking about, you have to give the officials space to be able to run down the field, and they have to run off the sideline themselves to keep from getting hit sometimes. all over the place and the screen pass hit immediately and knocked down for a loss as defensively Jabril Wilson was there to hit uh, Cadillac Williams by the way Wilson has eight tackles on the night he's been a busy young guy Auburn's going to get this back though on the defense in the neutral zone at the snap five yard penalty repeat first down Reese Davis, let's check in with you. All right, Ryan, to start the day, four unbeaten teams from non-BCS conferences. Air Force has already gone down. Northern Illinois trailing Ohio when Josh Haldy dumps it off to Brad Cieslak. And Northern Illinois enter the house 16-13. The Huskies on top, and Louisville just scored to tie South Florida. Alrighty, our situation. Ronnie Brown has just trotted 
to the locker room as this running play is going to go for virtually zero. Wilson, one of the guys on the hit along with uh, Ritzman. And uh, Adrian, let's check with you. I think you've got an update on exactly what's going on with Ronnie Brown. What he is going to do, Ron, is to get his uh, hamstring and right thigh retaped as best he can, both underneath and over the top of his pads. There's not much you can do for a pulled hamstring, I'm told by the medical staff. It's just how much pain he can continue to play with should be back. You know, he took off uh, for the locker room with pretty good haste, though, Adrian, and I'm sure he's got pain, but uh, they're going to work on him, see if they can't get him squared away. Meanwhile, Cadillac Williams, huge burst inside the 30, tackled finally by Rashad Baker, but they're going to spot him down at the 27 and a half yard line. First down, Tigers. Can you talk about the luxury that Auburn has with these running backs? You get Ronnie Brown hurt, and you don't lose a thing with Cadillac Williams. Boy, they, when you have a tailback to run like this, you better watch your fullback. Number 45, Brandon Johnson, great blocker. So Williams is over 100 yards, tries to bounce this one outside, and he does. He is at the 15, and he's down to the 13. And I can tell you this, Summers had over 100 yards last week. Cadillac has gone over 100 tonight in the history of Tennessee football. They have not given up back-to-back -back games very many times with that many yardage to people. Yeah, Brandon Johnson, watch the block, number 45, coming around the corner. You're going to see him chop. All of a sudden, Carnell Williams gets the corner. You just got to follow this guy right here, number 45, and you find the football right here. From the 13-yard line, first down, and they go straight ahead with Williams. And again, just like in the first quarter, Mike, Auburn is with a rapid pace. Coming back to the line of scrimmage and running hard. Neal makes the tackle. And Carlton Neal, very good defensive end, makes the play. But Brandon Johnson in the offensive line has taken this game over. I don't think you'll see a pass. Now he, he's coming off the sideline. Trying to bring in two tight ends to, to balance Tennessee's defense up. Two tight ends, two wide receivers. On the second down play, blitz in the middle. Williams puts a head down, and he's going to be close to the five-yard line. Just short of it, actually. Rashad Baker again on the tackle. I think you'll see Brandon Johnson come back in because they need a lead blocker on that play. In fact, the last two times, or the last time, that Tennessee had back-to-back 100-yard -back rushers. Rod Stinson of Arkansas in 97, and then Derek Homer the next week at Kentucky. He had 137, and Stinson had 109. Last week, Summers had 158. Williams gets the handoff again, headed for the end zone. Doesn't get there. It'll be first and goal, Auburn. They are running at Tennessee's Constantine Richmond. They're taking on the best. That's a great effort by Carnell Williams. Crittenden with a very good block, the senior out of Montgomery. And the ball first and goal, and it is inside the one. 12th Carnell. play, it started back at the 34. As you see Ronnie Brown back on the field, he's been retaped. The handoff. Cadillac hurdles. He is an escalade. Touchdown. Brandon Johnson with a good block on the play. The Auburn Tigers with their third touchdown of the night. I know at halftime, Tommy Tuberville had to say, we let opportunities slip away. We got thrown the ball too much. Let's go back to the running game and lose Tennessee's defense. John Vaughn with the extra point attempt. Push that one off a little bit to the right, but he gets it. So Carnell Williams, 135 yards, his first touchdown of the night. Let's take a break. Our new score, Auburn, 21 to 7. ESPN's College Football Saturday, brought to you by Saturn.
makers of the highly adaptable view, redesigned L-Series, and the fun-to-drive Ion. And by Mentos, the fresh maker. Cast your vote for the Mentos Game Maker Moment of the Week at ESPN.com. Keyword Mentos. Well, we are back. War Eagle is the cry, and uh, I'll tell you what, the Tigers have been able to, uh, to get it going tonight. Mike, extremely tough in the opening quarter. Now here in the third quarter, they come out with a new burst. Yeah, they went back to the run in the football. They, there's no holds barred now. They're going to keep running the football at Tennessee until they stop it. Line drive kick for this one is going to go five yards deep into the end zone. Well, as you know, ESPN brings you this game in high definition, and it is exclusively sponsored by Phillips and by Best Buy. And as you can look at this beautiful, huge flat screen here behind uh, Mike Gottfried and myself, this literally changes the way that you watch football and the way that you will watch football from now on. Be sure and call your local cable operator or direct TV to determine availability of ESPN HD in your area. Mike has already purchased a couple of those. <laughs> Love it. Casey Clausen under pressure. He's already been sacked three times. Throws this one and has it complete at the 39-yard line and then across the 40. Tony Brown on the receiving end of that Clausen pass, and it's good for 22 yards. Pressure was on Casey Clausen, but they couldn't bring him down. Reggie Torbar has uh, really done a pretty good job of pressuring the quarterback so often. You know, we got to visit with him yesterday, and Mike, he's an undersized guy who really, as the coaches say, quite an overachiever. This pass over the middle very nearly intercepted, and it's incomplete. It was dropped. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. All right, Rob, Washington and UCLA. Remember, the Huskies were up 13-0 in this game. Drew Olsen on the bootleg. This followed a couple of defensive touchdowns for the Bruins. Then the freshman back, Maurice Drew, goes in. And since it was 13-0, UCLA's outscored them all 46-3. It's 46-16 in the fourth. Our situation, second down and 10. Tennessee, they're down by a couple of touchdowns. Ranked number seven in the nation undefeated blitz and it is picked up and the pass incomplete thrown low at the 45 yard line intended for mark jones had him ron uh, just threw it a little bit to his right mark jones was pretty good position to make that play tennessee again going to the throwing game right now what Philip told Adrian just before halftime he said if they keep putting up. eight and nine in the box we're going to keep throwing and right now good heavens they got almost they got nine people at the line of scrimmage now ten now they back off the two safeties Clausen from the shotgun gets this one has it complete good for the first down at the 43 to Mark Jones that's a big league throw right there third down you need to move the change you run the post route mark jones uh with a good route carlos. Clear out underneath and uh it's more of an in route carlos rogers pretty Danae good Young. shape just yep. couldn't make the play yep combining on the tackle under four minutes to play third quarter tennessee trying to answer Clausen steps up, gets it over the middle, has it complete, ball is fumbled. Auburn football, McNeil has it. Here's a completion right here. And then, boy, big time hit. I don't know if he ever had that football. And Terrius Thomas is uh, the man who makes the hit right here. On Brown, 
And then DeMarco McNeil comes up with the recovery. Campbell on first down, sets the throw, pumped it once, going to go deep, and it is just a little bit overthrown. Aroma should do the intended receiver. What do we got? Roughing the passer? With no, the I think it's going to be interference. A little bump downfield. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I would venture to say 86,000 fans here. They know Cadillac Williams is probably going to get this next ball. They're going back to the run. Yeah, it was on Mark Jones. 327 to play in the third. Flag goes down. Williams running for his life. Turns the corner. Gets a block. And he will go inside the 35. Now, there are two markers down. At the line of scrimmage. That's usually an illegal formation or offsides. But boy, what a job by Cadillac. Uh, there was nothing there. He, he made it. a big play. Yeah. He really did, Mike. Illegal formation. Six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. We talked about Hugh Nall, the offensive coordinator, and we uh, talked about getting into the offensive line coach being the offensive coordinator. What the offensive coordinator does, Ron, he handles the meetings, puts everything together. All the coaches get into the play calls, and Steve Emsinger is the play caller for Auburn, but it goes through Hugh Nall. So first down and 15. Williams, this time to the right side. Running hard inside the 45, and he's down in the vicinity of the 43. Adrian Carson, let's check with you. Too much pain for Ronnie Brown on that right hamstring. Yes, they did retake, but now there you've got two big ice bags taped inside of those football trousers, so it's up to the other stables running backs there to get them through. Run. Okay, and no sense in taking a chance in a ball game that you're leading by two touchdowns, Mike. No, and, and you, Ronnie Brown could hurt that more and be out for more time, so you got Cadillac in there. You can see his number, 65 yards on 12 attempts. Cadillac running hard. He's going to have the first down. Jabril Wilson, who should be in double figures in tackles, he has 10, was there to make the stop, and he's going to come out, and Brandon Jacobs will come into the lineup. Now, Ron, I'm going to tell you something. Now, this guy looks like, not that the other guys don't, this guy looks like Jim Brown. He told us on the practice field, or told the, the head coach asked him, he said, what did you weigh today, Brandon? He said, 263. That's a tailback, folks. Plus, he can run. Six foot four, a junior out of the state of Louisiana. Gets the handoff, and here he goes. And you see him just shed tacklers. If you're going to cut up and try to hit him and be insincere in your efforts, you better not try to do it. That's why I said they have better running backs than most pro football teams. The offensive line really comes off here and does a great job of getting movement on the defensive line. That's 11 yards on his first carry of the night. Jason Allen finally made the tackle. Boy, Eddie Grand, the running back coach, has got a problem keeping all three of these guys happy. <laughs> Sometimes that's difficult, isn't oh. it, Mike? This guy's just been waiting to get in this football game. 223 rush yards to three of Tennessee. Well, they give it to him again. Jacobs right up the middle, breaks a tackle, still taking people with him. And here's the difficult thing for Tennessee. This defense has been on the field a long time here in this third quarter. And now you put this big bruiser in there, and he's banging heads all over the place. All three of these running backs will play in the NFL. They all have something different about them. This guy just has great speed, but he has got size to punish him. Second down and about two for the Auburn Tigers. They lead it by 14. 
They go with Jacobs again. This time he's going to be game tackled at the line of scrimmage. Ritzman was the first man to lead the attack. Here's where Auburn now is dangerous. You can keep running the football and get three on the if you don't make the first down. But right now, Jason Campbell, if he bootlegs this play, he's going to be wide open because they're going to be so used to Cardell Williams coming inside. He's going to be open if he chooses to do this. Cadillac checks back into the lineup. The lone setback for the Auburn Tigers. Third down, they need the 14 and a half. It's the ball carry breaks the tackle, and Williams still fighting. He'll have the first down at the 11-yard line. Marvin Mitchell finally puts a stop on it. But why run the bootleg? When you can run Carnell, the Cadillac. Well, they'll move the change, and then uh, it'll be whistled back in. Mike, that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Two seconds down to one. We're headed to the final 15. And this, this huge throng of Auburn fans standing and cheering. Their ball club up by 14 and threatening again. Back after this timeout. So as we head to the final 15 minutes, Auburn 14 in the opening quarter, seven more in the third, and they lead it 21 to seven. And right now they have the football with a first down, and the ball is uh, around the 12-yard line of Tennessee. Ron, the key guy right here, Brandon Johnson again. He is blocking. He's turned around, tell Carnell which way to go. Tennessee creeps up and the handoff goes to Carnell to the right side and he'll take it down to around the eight yard line. Yeah, just a nice block again by what you know calls the toughest guy on our football team, Brandon Johnson, number 45. Watch him put the lick on. You know what's interesting about him, Hugh Nall said, I have no hesitation to put him in as the lone setback and let him run tailback because he is quick enough and he's also tough enough. He said he's the toughest guy on the Auburn football team. Bayou de Batre, Alabama. Takes it to Cadillac this time. Wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Paul Bennett. It's like stealing. Right there, when you got the running game going, Anytime you choose to run that bootleg, it's going to be open. And you're, going to, you're seeing a quarterback being developed here at Auburn. Well, Jason Campbell, the junior, has really played with a lot of maturity tonight. Vaughn with the extra point attempt. Knocks it home. It will take a timeout. 14-12 left in our ball game and a new score. Auburn, 28. Seventh rank Tennessee, seven. We'll be right back. Well, we're back. 28 to seven. The new score. Tennessee. Uh, tried to, to get something going and then uh, came up with the turnover uh, after the hit the tight end fumbled the ball Casey Clawson had a nice looking drive going and then I mean Auburn took care of business and went back to as Mike said what they have done best and that's running the football rushing yardage 239 to three and it's a pooch kick and the ball is caught by Tennessee and a fair catch was called for at the 36. Well, tomorrow, Major League Baseball postseason continues on ESPN. 1 o'clock, it's Oakland versus Boston. Game four, if necessary. Then at 4 o'clock, it's the New York Yankees taking on the Minnesota Twins. And Boston 1-1, one, one, bottom of the eighth. Miller on second. Manny Ramirez up. We, we saw Fenway Park. I, I that was one of the highlights yeah. going to Boston. It was. It really was. Play action by Clausen. Got a man open over the middle, and it's incomplete. James Banks. There was a flag down on the far sideline. 
It might be again. It's either going to be a legal formation or offside where it was called. Thomas probably. was defending on the play. Probably in legal formation. Nope. Yep. Moving. Ron, when you look at the well, SEC. That, that same signal yeah. covers illegal yeah. formation. They're getting those tackles. When you talk about the SEC, I believe the best team in the SEC is Georgia. Uh, week in, week out. Now, I know LSU beat them. LSU's the second best team, I believe, in the SEC. But Georgia really has some weapons, and they're going to get Tennessee next week. Second down and 10. Clawson, heavy pressure. Another flag is down, and this screen pass is caught by Jabari Davis, and he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Again, Dontarius Thomas. A lot of people thought Auburn had the best team. In the, there's a newspaper picked them number one in the country, so that probably was the worst thing that ever happened to him. Getting ranked number one preseason. Didn't deserve it. Illegal formation. Six men on the line. Penalty is declined. Third down. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. One of those non-BCS conference teams that are unbeaten. Louisville taking on South Florida on the doorstep. Oh, severe trickeration. Michael Bush back to Stephon LaForce. And the former Auburn offensive coordinator puts Louisville in the house. South Florida's on the move, though. Our situation, third down. Tennessee needs to take it all the way to the 47-yard line. Again from the shotgun, they come with the blitz, and the pass is caught right over the middle and close to the first down, and Hannon may have it. The sophomore out of Sarasota made the catch. It will be a first down. Now, Will Herring made the tackle. Casey Clawson, again, with another clutch pass. Interesting how many illegal formations we've had in this ball game yeah. tonight. On that touchdown you saw in the replay, Reese had a moment ago. Did you see those tackles? It looked like a V formation. Carpenters call it difficult. And there is another sack of Casey Clawson. That is four. And this time it's Edens who gets back to make still another tackle. Yeah, the offensive line of Tennessee has not done a good job uh, tonight in the running game and not been able to protect. I believe Sean Young's going to get beat here. No, Cody Douglas. Michael Munoz is out of the ball game. Aaron Sears has come in replacing him, number 76, on that offensive front. And right now, Mike, from where they're lined up, the right tackle is off the ball. Let's see if we get another flag. Clawson lobs this pass, and it is incomplete as Fleming went up for the ball and couldn't hold on to it. This may be offensive interference here on Tennessee because a little push. Troy Fleming coming out of the backfield. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Contact on the play. Tommy Tuberville is not happy. He has a problem with his neck. And he's really got a pain in the neck right now. Rose Green is the man who was trying to defend. See, Rose Green put his arm into it, and it's a good call. Lawson's pass incomplete. Looking for James Banks. That's what you do when you get a blitz. You got a safety blitz out of Will Herring, and James Banks runs his route shorter, but Casey Clawson couldn't get him the football. Here's Herring on the blitz. Will Herring has been active today. 6'4", 210, redshirt freshman. He tipped that ball. That's the reason That's it, why it uh, didn't get there. Yeah, the reason it did not get there. Second down and 10. 12 and a half minutes left in our ball game. Auburn up by three touchdowns and movement by Aaron Sears coming back into his blocking stance is going to cost him five more. Dexter Murphy. I was watching Dexter Murphy, the defensive end. He's moving. He moved his hand, and all of a sudden he got Tennessee to jump. Aaron Sears jumped. The freshman. 
Munoz on the sideline. Yeah, he's replacing uh, Anthony or Michael. And he comes up with a mistake right there. Tough place to play a freshman. I'll say one thing about Aaron Sears will be an All-American at Tennessee. Great high school player. 6'4", 300 pounds. Very large young man. Clausen got the pass. Has it complete inside the 20-yard line to Tony Brown. That is a really nice throw and a great grab by Brown of the junior out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. 29 yards, Mike yeah, you Godfrey. You can't get any better than this. Good throw and a great catch. Great concentration on the high catch. Carlos Dansby, a linebacker behind him right here. Clausen had to deliver that ball. He was still in his break. It is cut, and it was right there. Clausen, fade route, looking for the end zone, and that's going to be too far. James Banks, the intended receiver. Well, Will Herring has been all over the field. Needs his helmet right there, but uh, it started. he has been active. When he hit the ground, watch his head gear come apart. <laughs> watch the ear braces. They go everywhere as his head hits right there. <laughs> Mia reached out a little early there, too. Well, Banks wanted a flag, but he didn't get one. Second down and 10. From the Auburn 16-yard line. Clausen now with an audible. Plenty of time. Play clock is at 8. Now it's 7. Tennessee trying to answer. Clausen drills it, and it is caught for the touchdown. Mark Jones. That ball was almost intercepted, and he caught the ball. Good concentration by Mark Jones. He is stretched out to make that play. Donnie Young, number 10 on coverage. Will Hoyt to attempt the extra point, and that quieted this partisan house for a moment. Kick is good. And with 12.01 left to play in the ball game, the new score is Auburn 28, and now number seven ranked Tennessee 14. So as we watch the touchdown one more time, Casey Clausen took a shot from Dansby. Did the Yankees win by today? So we are back 28 to 14. Auburn leading. You can answer it. I mean, what's that? What's the question? Three to one. Three to one. How about the Rocket? Last pitch time well. He's he gonna, pitched well. Going to be in the, in that stadium pitching. He shouldn't retire. He should. He still can pitch. Keep going. I think his family has convinced him differently, though. Those four boys want him in Houston. Will Hoyt to kick it off. This is returnable. Very high. But it's short. Going to come down at the eight-yard line. Cadillac Williams. Cadillac running free across the 35 to around the 38-yard line. Well, how about this group of running backs for all? Uh, great players. Ronnie Brown breaks the outside and shows you his power. He goes off the sideline. He had a hamstring. They bring in a Cadillac. He roars up the football field. Breaks away, scores a touchdown. Then they bring Brandon Jacobs in the big horse. Six foot four, 257 pounds. They got them all. Thoroughbreds. Yeah, they had to call him Dooley. He's like a big Dooley pickup truck. Wow. Tough to get in his way. Right up the middle is uh, Wiggins and Cadillac will take it to around the 40 yard line. Tennessee fans are thinking about those recruiting days when you were recruiting you figured you had Cadillac and then all of a sudden at the last minute he comes to Auburn Ronnie Brown same way he came down to Tennessee and Auburn Auburn winning on both those tailbacks and there's a look at Jacobs
Williams again spins into the middle of the line, and I'll tell you, that spin move got him an extra four yards. You know what Tennessee's got to do right now is they got to sell out against the run. They, they got to bring it. They, they got to make themselves vulnerable in the secondary, but they got to get some help. They cannot allow Auburn to run this clock down, 10.56. So you really got to get up inside with nine guys. Look at these numbers. 28 rushes for Carnell. 168, 65, and 19 How yards. How about those Jacob. averages? <laughs> it's uh, not shabby. And as we mentioned, only one of the time as Tennessee had back-to-back uh, -back weeks where running backs went over 100 yards. That pass almost caught. McIntyre couldn't hold on, juggling it out of bounds. If you're Philip Palmer, you want him to pass. Yeah. And that's exactly what Tennessee did. They bloated up the box and said, if you're going to run, uh, you're going to run against an extra couple guys, so they threw the fade. I'm sure Tommy Tuber will like to have that call back a little bit. Only the third punt of the night by the Auburn Tigers. Cody Bliss, the freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee, will be kicking away to Mark Jones. Not a lot of clock off for Auburn. Good high hanging spiral. Going to run away from it. Bounce straight up in the air, but now goes into the end zone. Unlucky on the bounce at his 55 yards in the punt. So let's take a break. Auburn holding on to a two touchdown lead, just over 10 minutes to play. ESPN's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by 1 800 Collect. Save a buck or two. And by the document company, Xerox. There's a new way to look at it. So 10 minutes and 18 seconds left in our ball game, and uh, Auburn with a 28 to 14 lead. Tennessee can get back in this football game. They're in this game because Auburn helped them on those three plays. Two runs, and in the pass, stopped the clock. Now Tennessee can move down the field with a throwing game, get in the end zone, get the ball back, and let Auburn three and out again. You're right back in this thing. Well, there was. The back is resetting, so uh, the flag has been thrown, and, and uh, Mark Jones, the receiver. What well, penalties have hurt both these football teams tonight? Just when you get started, you get you get called back. Tommy Tuberville, I'm sure he's talked to Hugh Noll and the offensive coaches and talked about. We got to run some clock off. Casey Clawson's 11 and 0 on the road, so you know he's capable of bringing his team back. First down and 15. Clawson sets deep. Far sideline drills this one has it complete and that's uh, Hannon who will make the reception. What Auburn is doing on defense right now with a 14 point lead is heavy two deep coverage right here not giving up the big play but what Tennessee hits that bubble right in between two deep coverage. There's the corner route right here you hold the uh, corner and break in front of the safety. So first down at the 35 yard line. Here comes the blitz. Auburn trying to heat him up and the pass is thrown complete right over the middle and a flag has come down and yeah. Hannon has become their favorite receiver all of a sudden. Interference going to be on Auburn but uh, when now the blitz comes and Casey Cross and his offensive line pick it up and do a good job and get the ball off to Hannon. The holding. Uh, Going to probably be on Kevin Hobbs. Pass interference on the defense. That penalty will be declined as the play made 11 yards. First down. First and 10, Tennessee at the 46. Kevin Hobbs, as we mentioned back in the first half, is a walk on, and he has two interceptions, leading the Auburn Tigers in pickoff.
Travis Williams showed blitz, but then he stayed at home and clashing his head. And oh, does he get bedroom down hard by Langenfeld. Five times that Casey has been sacked in his ballgame tonight. Now, the right side of the offensive line of Tennessee is going to get beat right up here. Langenfeld just going to throw away Sean Young and uh, make the sack on Casey Clawson. Tennessee, no huddle. Clawson lobs this one and has a man, but couldn't get it to him. That was for James Banks, but it was just a little too high. Now Gene Chizik. Too deep on first down, and the second play, a uh, blitz. Now a uh, uh, three deep zone on this play, trying to give Casey Clawson all kind of fits here, figuring out what he's in. Don't want to give up the big play too fast. They want the clock to run. Too deep again. Third down. They need to take it to the 44-yard line of Auburn. Good protection this time, and a pass over the middle is caught. It'll be enough for the first down, James Banks. When Tennessee gets them in too deep, they've had success because there's no pressure out of the four-man rush, and they got a time for Casey Clawson to dissect the too deep. See the both safeties on the hash mark. He just waits for James Banks to come out on the in route. Now Gene Chiswick might heat him up. First down, new line of scrimmage, the Auburn 40-yard line. Here comes a blitz. Clawson gets it away. Complete to Fleming. Hurdles a man, and he's still on his feet and will have another Tennessee first down. Travis Williams in hot pursuit. It's a gain of 11. And Troy Fleming, uh, Woody McCorvey, talked about him as a running back. He's the running back coach. He says he make it a point. He's the most unselfish guy on our football team. The ultimate team guy, Troy Fleming. Fleming has gone to the bench, and William Ravel will come in replacing him, number 45, at fullback. Clawson looking, still looking, got a man and completed the eighth. Tackle is broken, and it is touchdown, Chris Hannon. A lot of fight left in this number seven ranked Tennessee volunteer football team. Got him in two deep coverage again. And Casey Clawson was able to slide out, hit Chris Hannon in front of the safety. You're not 11 to 0 as a quarterback for no reason. He's got ice water in his veins. Will Hoyt with the extra point attempt. And he's got it. And Tennessee, just like that, with seven minutes, 53 seconds showing on the clock, is within a touchdown of the Auburn Tigers. He's right in that hole in two deep zone. So let's take a timeout. Didi is the man who missed him. Tennessee within a touchdown. Two deep coverage from Auburn. Chris Hannon's going to come up here and hit the soft spot. The running back's going to hold the corner in the flat, and he's wide open. Casey Clawson does a good job of sliding with the pressure, and now he hits the hole right there in two deep coverage. Hannon's got the football, missed tackle, touchdown. Now turns it over to the defense if they can get three and out again. Seven plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 25 seconds. AC Clawson, four of seven, 58 yards in the touchdown. Will Hoyt to kick it off. Very high and deep, and this is going to be five yards deep in the end zone and will not be returned. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Ron South Florida and Louisville coming down to the very end. This is a fourth down play, 16 seconds to go. Brian Fisher running the option. Clinton Crosley scores for the Bulls to tie up Louisville. They went into overtime. South Florida scored first. Louisville now getting the ball. And Northern Illinois unbeaten, but down to Ohio under five minutes to go. Bobcats. 
Nice story on game day today on uh, DeKalb, Illinois, and how those people have just really turned on to Northern Illinois. They have uh, they have done a great job, but right now in trouble with under five to play. They keep it on the ground, and the Williams spinning out to around the 23 yard line. Kevin Simon is there to make the tackle for Tennessee. Yeah, a lot of time now for Tennessee's defense. They need one stop to get that ball back in Casey Clawson's hands. Auburn second half, they've relied on the run. Why wouldn't you? Very well called game by Auburn's offensive coaches. Danny Lindsay out over the football, the junior out of Douglas, Georgia, 6'3, 299. Four seconds on the play clock and down to three. And the man at the top of the eye again is Cadillac, and he's only going to have about a yard. Dicker, Dickerson is there to grab him. A lot more push out of the defensive line of Tennessee on that on that last play. Now you get Jason Campbell in a situation where he may have to throw this football on third down. You look for the bootleg. John Chavis making sure that the right defense is signaled in and here comes the play third down Auburn they need to take it to the 30 yard line that's McIntyre in motion to the top of your screen pressure off the corner they swing the pass out it's complete to Williams and on second effort he'll have the first down that could turn out to be huge because with the first down they stand on running plays Mike to run over two and a half minutes off the clock now but well played uh, well run play call by Jason Campbell you get Carnell Williams that's like a toss sweep when he gets the ball out there and then it extra effort gets the first down you see Kevin Burnett trying to make the tackle and he got by him not who finally wrapped him up but not before they moved the chains now the clock runs we're about to go under six minutes to play in our ball game. Williams again behind his blockers and in fact when he ran into his own blocker it's like a rear ending and uh, and he went down. See now Tennessee's fronts doing what they are known for they're getting push up the field and there's no running lanes for Cadillac Williams. Carlton Neal number 46 yeah, there is Carlton the man who got the push. Neal, Neal is a very good football player very strong tough guy. Again, a two time in alignment, two wide receivers. Williams, the only setback. Pressure in the middle. Campbell's going to run. And Campbell will be knocked down hard at the 35 yard line. Now, decision time. Third at about five and a half yards, Mike. Now, Kevin Burnett made the play on that. And I was talking to the Tennessee defensive coaches before the game. They said the one thing about Jason Campbell, he doesn't run the ball much. He doesn't pull it down and take off. He did on that play. Tennessee they have two timeouts left if Auburn picks up this first down then Phil Fulmer has guys are gonna have to start looking at the clock and have to use at least one of those timeouts to slow it down under five minutes to play Campbell on third down has it complete that's mixed and fighting his way is gonna have the first down as Tennessee is trying to strip the ball away well, what a big pass by Jason Campbell on third down that's a sign of a good offensive football team when they keep those chains moving Anthony Mix the guy that was a tight end they moved him to wide receiver the coaches you know said he has a smile on his face again because he's a wide receiver Didn't have to block those defensive tackles and ends Dickerson was the man trying to strip the ball as you look at the numbers on Campbell 11 of 18 157 and two touchdowns About to go under four minutes left in the ball game. Williams sweep to the left, short side of the field, turns the corner and gets belted out of bounds. And very, very hard. Coming up next on ESPN Sports Center with John Anderson and Kevin Frazier. Kobe speaks to the media. Marlon Miracle 
Emmett's return to Big E. And stay tuned for ESPN News Extra for the Tennessee press conference following this ball game. Talked about you know being the offensive coordinator. His offensive line has really done a super job in this game tonight. By the way, this is the most rushing yards against a Tennessee defense since Kansas State ran for 297 in the Cotton Bowl in 2001. Williams again, head down, no first down here. Boy, he gets roughed down hard by Kevin Burnett. Yeah, Kevin Burnett uh, does about everything for this defensive football team. He's on the end. Kevin Burnett stands up to tight end and comes underneath and makes that tackle on Cadillac. They're going to see Tommy Tuberville has asked for a measurement. Wants to see what they need to get. He doesn't have the benefit of the yellow line. And as you can see by the yellow line, uh, Tennessee is going to hold Auburn on this play as they stretch it out. It's going to be short by just about a yard. Tell you, this would be a great time to run a bootleg run because everybody in this ballpark figures the Cadillac's going to carry the football. Cadillac, 183 rushing yards, second highest of his career. And now a timeout has been taken by Auburn, so we'll step aside. 3.43 left in our ball game. 28-21 Auburn. So we're back. One touchdown lead by Auburn over the seventh-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. And at the beginning of this contest, if you were not with us, Auburn literally owned Tennessee. Looked as though they were going to blow them out of the park. And then every time they go in front by a couple of scores, Tennessee comes back trying to get a stop here with a third down and less than a yard. Well, there's moving all over the place here. And Campbell lobs this one up to McIntyre, and he can't hold on. And we got still another flag that has gone down. Antoine Stewart with the cover. I think this play was uh, quarterback Jason Campbell was trying to draw them offside. And the center snapped the ball early. And then you had the bad play. That's exactly what happened. Now, was he out of out, out of bounds over there, the receiver? He had been shoved out and came back in, yes. There were two fouls on the play. Offsides on the defense. Pass interference on the defense. The pass interference will be accepted. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. All centers are taught when they jump offside, snap the football. I don't see anybody offside. A little movement there, but I didn't see anybody offside. Now here's the interference. Antoine Stewart's holding on to Jarris McIntyre, so that penalty was there. So first down, three minutes and 36 seconds left to play. Cooper Wallace, the tight end in motion, hit hard at the line of scrimmage, and Williams will spin forward for maybe one Jabril Wilson defensively for Tennessee. Still think a bootleg run would be, be there for Auburn, but when you got Sea Biscuit in the backfield, you might as well Get Seat Biscuit and give him the ball. They're going to let the clock run. Tennessee's got one timeout left. Auburn really taking their time, but on the play clock, it's still at eight, and now it's seven. Trying to run it down as far as they can at every snap. Williams straight ahead runs into his own blocker and then uh, runs into a host of Tennessee volunteers led by Mapu. Now you got to take the, be thinking about the timeout now for Tennessee. Stop it here and you got to call the timeout. 
third down. They whistle it back in. The line to make is down at the 22. Clock running, 227, now 226. You know a guy that's been a big player for Auburn tonight, Anthony Mix. He has been in key pass plays. Number nine right here. Probably going to go in motion. Well, let's see what happens uh, with Campbell on this play. He's going to call a timeout. I don't know if he got it in time. I guess he did before they got a delay of game. So they'll call a timeout and stop it with 2.07 to play. Gives John Chavis a chance to see what the formation is. Tonight, our player of the game is brought to you by Russell Athletic. And it is Carnell Cadillac Williams. 35 rushes, 187 yards. It's an average of over five per try. And he scored a touchdown. Injured last year in a game that we had down in Gainesville, Florida. Severe injury to his foot. Had to have surgery, but has bounced back. And we asked him, he took a pretty good shot in that thing last week. Western Kentucky. And, and uh, they, you know, they say he's no worse for, for the wear. And it's, it's almost like that was a good thing because it let him know that, that the injury has been taken care of by surgery and that he can, he can take a lick of that thing without the further injury. If you're in the West now, bad news for the other teams in the West, Auburn's alive. Oh, no and question. Very much breathing. And uh, LSU, very solid. Arkansas, out of the gate. Ole Miss with a big win today. Georgia and Tennessee going to fight for the East. Campbell sets up in a shotgun this time. Tennessee with a blitz off the corner. And... Auburn goes with a running play right into the middle. And Mapu is making the tackle. Now you use your last time out, so Tommy Tupperville has a decision now to make. Well, with a seven-point lead, you take a, a chance on a distance field goal, Mike, because this attempt would be in the vicinity of 46 yards, which is low trajectory. And he missed one earlier. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think that's the big question right now. Salt to the way if he makes it. And you can't coach out of fear. Sports Center coming up next immediately following our ball game. And on ESPN News, back here to the Plains and the uh, Tennessee Press Conference. So the number seven team in the nation within 159 of having their streak broken. And it looks as though that uh, John Vaughn is going to try a distance field goal. I like this call by Tommy Tuberville. You never coach out of fear. You now he may punt the ball. They may snap at him and they might punt it right here. But I like the call right here. Either way. 46 he, yards is the attempt from the right hash mark. He's going to go for it. He's got the distance. And he's no good. Wide to the right. Still like that call by Tommy Tuberville. Now, Tennessee, Casey Clawson gets a keep, uh, gets a chance to keep his record intact. If he can take this team down the field and get a touchdown, the extra point, force it to overtime. No timeouts for Tennessee. So for Auburn, 12 plays, 61 yards, 601 off the clock, and they come away with no points. The biggest thing for them there, though, is to have run the clock down to 152. Crowd coming to life for the Auburn defense. Clawson play action. Puts this one up, and it's well of the throne. Looking for James Banks down the near sideline. Casey in the second half, two touchdown passes. Mark Jones 
It's a heck of an effort right there. Does a great job right here. Just skating up to find Hannon. Chris Hannon, big target, 6-4. Second down and 10. 145 to play in a ball game, and the numbers on Clausen. Lobs this one out, and on the safety valve, it is dropped by Fleming. Yeah, Casey Clausen was trying to give a signal to, to Troy Fleming to take off down the field. Pass protection is, gets collapsed. The tackle just gets run over. Casey just tries to let the ball out there for Troy Fleming. Would have been a good catch and good play if he could have held on. It's now third down, Tennessee. To move the sticks, they're going to go out beyond the 39-yard line. Auburn drops off in coverage. They send one, and the pass up in the middle is dropped by, by Hannon. Tell you two things on that play. Casey Crossan was hit, and with the blitz in his face, threw that football to Hannon, and it was right there. Chris Hannon took his head upfield. Now watch, first of all, the pressure right there in his face. Chris Hannon moves his head up the football field. Don Terry, Terry Thomas was the guy that hit Crossan. So it comes down to this. Fourth down and 10, Tennessee. They're down by a touchdown with a minute 31 to play. Michael Munoz moved. Penalties tonight against Tennessee, 10 Dead for ball. 71 yards. Ball start on the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Happens on road game. South Carolina moved a bunch last week. Now Tennessee having the problem with the Auburn crowd. Fourth down, they're going to take it out to the 39 yard line to keep this drive going. Casey throws it over the middle, has it complete. They've got the first down to Hannon. He caught this one, and they'll have a first down at the 45-yard line. Now, we've been talking about the offensive line of Tennessee. They've picked up the rush of the defensive line, giving Casey Clawson time to thread that pass to Hannon. Cannon, an option quarterback in high school at Sarasota, Florida. That pass to the sideline is caught by Fleming, steps out of bounds to stop the clock, but he only picked up about one yard. Fourth down pass. You got to be good on fourth down. Chris Hannon working on the end route. Caught it right in stride. Now you start to think about James Banks. I really like Hannon. Yeah. Good, Han good target, 6'4". Yep. And he's going to gain some weight. He's a pretty slightly built. But by this time next year, he'll be 10 to 15 pounds heavier. Second down and 10. Clausen, he's got a man, but he's going to run. And he will step out of bounds after picking up the first down. And what he had was Fleming the fullback, and they had linebacker coverage, and that's where he wanted to lob it. Ron, he had an open receiver, but he had already made up his mind he was going to run for that first down, and he may have got tagged out of bounds there, so you're going to add another 15 on this play. You could see the official picking up the marker. Dead ball. Personal foul. Hit out of bounds on the defense. That's hard. 15 yard penalty. First down. Kevin Hobbs is the man who hit him out of bounds. Now add 15 more, and all of a sudden, Tennessee is at the 29 and a half yard line. You see the hit out of the bounds here, right there, a little push. You didn't need to do that. And all the Tennessee coaches, players are pointing right there. Gerald Harrison down there, first one to point, assistant to Philip Fulmer.
Clausen on first down. They pick up the blitz, and the ball is intercepted by Auburn, and that is Rogers. Carlos Rogers with the pickoff, with 58 seconds showing on the clock. Jones was intended receiver. Carlos Rogers breaks in front of him. And picks that football off. Mike, it's a first pickoff. And one of the things that the Auburn coaches talked about is this time last year they had a dozen between interceptions and fumble recoveries, and they're like less than half this year. They'll go on one knee. Tennessee has no timeouts remaining. 50 seconds down to 49. Auburn's back. They got to go to Arkansas, but they're back. They're back in the SEC. They got confidence. They answered a lot of questions tonight. Tennessee still alive in the East. All they got to do is beat Georgia next week. Get right back in that lead. Very capable of doing that. Jason Campbell. Will take a knee, and that should be the final play of this ball game. Tennessee, the number seven ranked team, will fall to the Auburn Tigers as the two coaches meet at the 40 yard line to shake hands. And it is the Auburn Tigers who come away with the upset. Two seconds down to one, and the Tigers have pulled it off. So our final score, Auburn 28 and Tennessee 21. Coming up next on ESPN, it's Sports Center, And over on ESPN News, it's the Tennessee Press Conference. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. And now for Mike Godfrey, Adrian Karsten, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody, from Auburn, Alabama.